the Winston Cup Series comes to Michigan Speedway in its 50th year. Jeff Gordon will be going for his fourth consecutive victory today. Cars just get better. Luck keeps going our way. You know, I drove my butt off, and uh, I don't deserve these blessings, and all the things that are happening in my life, I sure am thankful. the gridiron no doubt dale jared and mark martin's combined two poles and six win season would be sufficient for first team all-american status problem is the guy they're chasing jeff gordon with six poles and seven wins he's having a first team all-world year that's why there's reason to worry ernie irvin's not chasing a championship but a win would go a long way in his bid for a top 10 points finish Four years ago, this place nearly conquered him. Last year, he got the upper hand with a win. He's on the pole today, and his young team is confident it can lead him back to victory lane. So many men are chasing points. Some drivers are chasing their dreams. Nemechek, Dullenbach, Bickle, Irwin, and Park. Can they turn strong qualifying runs into their first win? Dale Jarrett did it here. Can someone else do it today? Run, keep on Formed by the Michigan, Michigan Air National Guard. They're flying F-16. Start your engines now. Here is Bob Yeager. F-16 Fighting Falcons overhead. The crowd gets ready. The drivers get ready. We're set for 400 miles of competition at Michigan Speedway. Michigan Speedway near Brooklyn, Michigan. Welcome to ESPN's live coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVille. The 21st race of the season. Five drivers in the current top 10. Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, and Dale Earnhardt have all won here. Among those who have not won, Jeff Gordon, the points leader. But the championship is far from decided. In fact, the point spread from first to third is even closer this year, as you can see by those numbers on the right, than it was last year. And from this point on, Jeff Gordon ran into problems in 97, as Mark Martin gained 80, and Jarrett gained 246 on Jeff. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins, and it's a beautiful day for racing here at Michigan Speedway. Nice, gentle breeze, sunshine just like it was yesterday during happy hours. So, Benny, the cars will run the same today as they did yesterday? You would think. You would think in a perfect world they would, but it's just so unbelievable how these cars struggle on Sunday after being perfect on a Sunday afternoon. We'll see cars that start in the front, go to the rear. We'll see cars in the rear that go to the front. And yesterday afternoon, most of those cars, the drivers would say they were ready to race. Well, the temperature is very similar to when they set the cars up yesterday afternoon, but this track is very susceptible to a variety of temperatures, so it does change them. And maybe this track is wide, as we all know. Lots of passing room. As a result, we don't have many caution flags on this track, so if they got a new offending race car, they might have to live with it for at least 100 miles until they can make a pit stop. And John Kernan, historically, there isn't much attrition here in a race. 
you're exactly right, Bob. And uh, if you look at the race here at Michigan, it may not make your run for the championship. However, it could very well break it because there always seems to be a lot of cars running at the finish. That means if you're in the top five in points, you have an early problem and fall several laps behind. About the best that you can hope for is a 40th place finish. This series has already been to Las Vegas, but you'll see some real gambling today. Green flag laps will have many crew chiefs seeing red. Fuel mileage is almost always a factor in a long, wide race track like Michigan. You better be able to go 50 laps, because some guys will try to go 54. You may have to convince your driver two tires are better than four, and at the end, slower may be faster. At some point today, every crew chief must ask himself which is stronger, his courage or his car? week ago yesterday, Mark Martin lost his father, his stepmother, and his half-sister in a tragic plane crash. His mindset today reminds me of the old adage, the happiest people in the world don't necessarily have the best of everything, they simply make the best of everything. Much of life, and most of sport, is about human emotion. Right now, Mark Martin is alone with his thoughts. He knows what his dad would have wanted. He told me, all year long, I have driven my guts out. Today, I will drive my heart out. From all of us at ESPN, condolences to Mark Martin and his family. But we're just about ready to go racing here in Michigan. We'll be back with the starting lineup and the green flag in just a moment. It starts here. It starts here. It also starts here and here. And it all starts right here at Walmart, home of the EverStart battery. All the coal cranking power your truck, car, boat, or more will ever need. Power you can count on when you need it most. And since it's at Walmart, you can also count on a good price. Ever start. The name says it all. Gordon is way behind. Stick a fork in Jeff. He's done. Oh my, what is he thinking? Uh, oof. Holy baloo! What the heck is that? That's gotta hurt. Well, what could possess a man to drive like that? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Gotcha. He's making his move backwards. Gordon wins. We gotta get him a cup holder. Generation next. Hey, Mr. Science. Ever wonder what a hard-working engine goes through? Yes. It gets the high revving I drove over the mountain because it was their crap kicked out of it. With abuse like that, you don't want to take chances. This is Quaker State 4x4, a synthetic blend for hard-working engines made by guys with more college degrees than they've had dates. It's been tested. For pure maximum protection, there's nothing better. I wouldn't lie to you. They're not paying me enough. Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? We're doing makeovers. Interested? Come. Sit. Come on. <laughs> What do you think? If you're gonna get a makeover, come on. Get a makeover. If you're gonna get a burger, get a burger. The Monster Burger, only at Hardee's. Two large, juicy patties with the most bacon and cheese you can get. Ooh. If you're gonna go, go all out. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Pepsi 400 from Michigan Speedway is being brought to you by First Plus Financial. At First Plus, you don't need equity, you just need a phone. By Quaker State, sensible technology, what more do you need to know? And by Hardee's, go all out. We are racing today on a two-mile oval. And there is banking everywhere, even the back stretches bank a little bit, and the corners 18 degrees. But as Ned said earlier, the real key here is the wideness of the racetrack, which allows a lot of passing and a lot of different lanes that the drivers can race in. Today's field consists of 14 Chevys, 22 Fords, and 7 Pontiacs, and Chevrolet leads the manufacturer's battle. Now here's the Walmart Everstart starting lineup. On the pole, Ernie Irvin in the Skittles Pontiac, qualifying at 183.416. And alongside is Bobby Labonte in the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Row number two, it's Jeff Gordon in car number 24 and Dale Jarrett in the Quality Care Ford Credit Ford. The third row, Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas in car number six and Lakeland, Florida's Joe Nemechek in 42. Wally Dollenbach starts in the seventh position. Alongside will be Jeremy Mayfield. 
In the fifth row, it's Ward Burton, car number 22, and Ken Schrader in number 33. Rusty Wallace and Rich Bickle will start back in row number six. And take a look at the rest of the starting lineup here. We've got a tremendous crowd on hand. On the outside of the row eight is Morgan Shepard. Continues to have those great runs in Little Joe Buck's on uh, unsponsored car. There will be one more lap before the cars get the green. They will, in fact, in one half lap. Bob is some drivers starting back in the field here. There's Jeff Bodine starting 24th and Jeff Burton starting in 25th place. Look for him to come to the front. He had a strong car in practice yesterday. And on the outside of row 14, Dennis Setzer in the, in the 13th first plus car. Look for him to run well today. And it's good to see Bud Moore back in racing. That car number 15 with Ted Musgrave at the wheel. First race that Bud Moore has run this year. Musgrave the driver. And on the outside of row 18, Jimmy Spencer has elected not to run the race today. Frank Kimmel will drive the Winston No Bull car today. And you see the provisional starters here. Earnhardt heading up that list. And that's Kevin LePage making his first start in the car number 16. 43 starters set to go. Back in the 22nd row will be Darrell Waltrip, who took the previous champion's provision. All right, the green flag is just about set to come out as the huge crowd on hand here on its feet, getting set for 400 miles of racing on this beautiful day, 200 laps, and Ernie Irvin leads them off corner number four with Bobby Labonte alongside, looking for the green flag, and there it is, we're racing. Very good start. Ernie Irvin did, so he jumps out front. Jeff Gordon has dropped into second position as they head for turn two. Our 43 cars go by. And that was the 100th lap that Ernie Irvin has led in 19 races here at Michigan Speedway. You can see Morgan Shepard, the 91 car on the outside of Kenny Irwin in the 28. And there's Sterling Marlin trying to squeeze in between cars. In fact, that 28 car may have a bit of a problem. He's, he's getting passed on both the outside and the inside. Here comes Jerry, Jerry Navy with the 9 car. I would say that until the air pressure gets built up in his tires, he's being very tentative and the car may be not handling the way he would like for it to. Yeah. We run along with Kenny Irwin and there we see Jeff Burton trying to make his way to the front. Ned said he would, go, he would be going forwards and he's trying his best. 46 car of Jeff Green. Looks like he's got some damage there on the right side. And the caution is out, so apparently there's some debris on the racetrack. Jeff Green in the pit early. Jimmy Mayfield as well, car trying to get on the inside of Schrader. Now once that caution comes out, now they can race back to the flag, but of course no one is down the lap now, so they're told in the driver's meeting, hey, this is a, a gentleman's call, just uh, stay in line. We'll see what happens here with Green. You see him in the oh, middle yeah. of the screen there, get loose, went up and slapped the outside wall, and look and go down through the cars, and no one hit him. Wow. And he came right down on pit road. See it again here. See the green car right in the center of the, of the racetrack. There he's already into the wall. This is from the helicopter. So boy, he hit it pretty hard, but was able to get the car down into his pit area, and that's where it remains. Looks like they may be pushing it behind the wall now. So Jeff Green with some early problems at Michigan. So the caution is out here as three laps have been completed. Ernie Irvin leading his third race of 1998. He also led at Bristol and at the Brickyard 400. They're the top 10. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilvis right after these messages. There is a business class seat that tilts as a whole, raising your knees 
distributing your weight evenly and relaxing every part of your body, which makes it oh so easy to drift off. The Club World Cradle Seat, only on British Airways, the world's favorite airline. Take your superstar running back. If he has a good game, he'll run for over 100 yards. If he has a great game, 200 yards. And that's with some heavy hitting. Now take a professional tennis player. In an average match, he'll run between three and four miles. And that, too, includes some heavy hitting. Come to the 1998 U.S. Open and see some of the greatest athletes in the world. For tickets, call 1-888-OPEN-TICKS. Get in the game. You know, some people think the best thing about ESPN magazine is the writing. Other people say it's the great photography. And some people think it's the design. But if you ask me, the best thing about ESPN magazine is clearly the large format. These subscription cards, however, are driving me crazy. This is joy. This is frustration. This is pride. This is humility. This is a sport that's about more than just winning or losing. In fact, it's a sport that's not so much about cars as it is about people. This is racing. This is NASCAR. Jeff Green banged against the fourth turn wall on the third lap of the race, and so the caution is out here at Michigan Speedway. And there were some that came in during this caution period to top off. Pretty smart strategy, huh? Yeah, fuel mileage can be, can play here at the Michigan Speedway, and several of them came in. They were, they were back towards the tail end of the pack. You see Dale Earnhardt coming out of the pits, and uh, the hood going up on Johnny Benson's car number 26. And he stayed in for quite a while. He's just, just now going out, but the others just basically topped off the fuel. John Kernan is back in Jeff Green's pit. Bob, they have actually pushed the car, Jeff's number 46 money store car, all the way back into the garage area. And uh, Jeff looks like a lot of damage. What happened? Well, I lost it. I mean, I come off four there, and uh, I've been loose there like the first lap, but I thought, thought the air pressure would, would get up and we'd be okay. Been fighting loose ever since I've been here, so I, finally, I guess it finally bit me. Hate it for these guys in the money store where they've been uh, worked their butt off this weekend to try to make this car drive like I wanted it to. And it's not going to happen today with that way to Bristol. Right now the crew going to work. They're going to try and get the car fixed and make repairs that they can make and then send Jeff back out to get a few more laps. Quite a bit of damage there on the right side. The caution came out on lap number four. And just drove right down pit road. It's too bad that the, the damage wasn't minor enough that they could uh, just fix it and go back out. They were seeing Rick Mast, who'll be carrying an onboard camera today. He started in 31st. He's currently running there. Also, Kenny Irwin will be carrying an onboard camera. He's currently 21st, started 18th. Bill Elliott, McDonald's onboard camera. He moved up three spots. You see the Thorn Apple Valley onboard camera. That's a, Here's Rusty Wallace, who has stayed in his 11th starting position, the Miller Lite onboard camera. And Wally Dallenbach carries the Budweiser on board. Turned around in the fifth spot, and right in front of him, Mark Martin will be carrying an onboard camera from his four spot. He looks at Bobby Labonte, Jeff Gordon, and our leader, Ernie Irving. Bobby Labonte also has one. The Food Lion on board camera. That, that was the pace car. I thought that was the pace car we were seeing this morning. Not Rich Bickle's throwing out the valley car. Here we go. The flag waves and we're back to racing. Ernie Urban had jumped off at quite a big advantage there in the front three laps before the We'll see what happens here as we go green once again. Got himself a pretty good jump this time, Bob. Not quite as big as he did before. If we see cars racing side by side, is to go into turn one, off turn two. And you can see the lead that Ernie has, about six car lengths over Jeff Gordon. John Ed 
already, and Bill Elliott battling for the 14th position as Elliott maintains the spot going into turn three. And what a battle for second place. Bobby Labonte just went on the outside of Jeff Gordon going into turn three and made the pass. Oh, we got a crash. We see Derek Coates' car and Morgan Shepard's car. Right here in the tri-oval at the starting line. Two cars sliding through the grass, Cope and Morgan Shepard, with some heavy damage to the cars. We went through the entire 200-mile race yesterday for the Bush Series without a caution, and we've had two in the first seven laps here this afternoon. And right there are two guys that didn't need this. These guys have had so much tough luck, and Benny mentioned Morgan Shepard driving an unsponsored car there. Needed a good run, a good finish here. So did Derek Cope, and there they sit. Sheet metal all banged up. One thing about it, they can certainly talk to each other, can't you, because they're sitting door to door. <laughs> they sure are. See Coke trying to drive away. The hood's <laughs> open the wrong way. <laughs> the hood's supposed to go from the front, not the rear. Well, he's still shedding pieces as he drives the car through the grass, now making his way onto the racetrack. Morgan Shepard has been unable to start the 91 car. Both drivers have gone a lap down now. That's our Siemens onboard camera. Take a look at some replays. We'll see what happened to Derek and Morgan. And it looks like Morgan gets hit from behind. Now, Derek, I think Derek Cope got hit behind by Sterling Marlin and goes down. Uh, Morgan was just on the inside of him and... He turned him right into the 91 car. It looked like that was Sterling Marlin, didn't it, Ned? Yes. From the onboard, carried by Kenny Irwin. This is going to have four cars in front. Boy, they cleared out in a hurry for him. You heard Kenny lift just barely to see if uh, he was going to be involved, and he knew he wasn't, so he stood on the gas. There it is once again, the contact between Marlin and Cope. And... Yep. Poor Morgan Shepard and Ed just riding along. Yep, he was a uh, victim of circumstances down there on the inside. No no uh, problems that didn't look like, and all of a sudden he gets hit. He must be the most shocked guy on earth when he's just riding along. All of a sudden somebody runs in the side of him on the straightaway. We saw the 26 car with the hood up during a pit stop they made in our first caution. John, what's going on? I just talked to Steve Meal. He told me that the car has developed a miss in the engine. So this uh, caution is a blessing for them as they'll come down pit road once again. Johnny will come in. They'll pop the hood and look at it. They couldn't fix it the last time out. Steve says it just doesn't want to clear, and it just develops a miss, a very flat run. So he will be coming on pit road. Now the pit road is open. They'll pop the hood up, and they'll take another look to see if they can figure out what exactly is wrong with the Cheerios Ford. And then we talked about at the top of the show how these cars are just not perfect when the race starts a lot of these cars are stopping now for chassis adjustments now he has a problem the 26 car benson has a problem with some of these other cars just stopping to make chassis adjustments yeah they found out in those first few laps that the car was not the way it was yesterday when they buttoned it up after the happy hour practice so they come in now's a good opportunity to make those adjustments especially for those back near the tail end of the field Buckshot Jones also visits Pitt Road. Dale Earnhardt was in again, and he's rolling back out. So is Steve Grissom. The several making some pit stops here for fuel and to make some chassis adjustments. As we're just nine laps into this race and already two cautions. It's the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilvis at Michigan Speedway. Ernie Urban has led all the way so far. Bobby Labonte now running in second spot. Let me give you a little driving lesson, okay? Vehicles have changed. They're bigger, they're faster, they're a lot more than just a fashion accessory, okay? And guess what? The way you drive has changed, too. So why are you still using your old motor oil? Doesn't make sense. These are Quaker State Synthetics. 4x4, four four, high performance, ultra premium. Made for what you drive, where you drive, the way you drive. They've been tested. For pure maximum protection, there's nothing better. I think it's time for an oil change. Quaker State, sensible technology. What more do you need to know?
asked professional race car driver Scott Pruitt to test our Firehawk SH30 high-performance tires with Unit T. Unit T, the ultimate tire technology we've spent years perfecting. In fact, when it comes to designing performance tires for wet cornering, we've been around the block. The Firestone Firehawk SH30 with Unit T. Get a grip on wet cornering. Chuck, not much more you can say. I know when we saw the replay, Felix Sabatis came running down here to tell you he was sorry. Yes, he did, and I appreciate that. Felix is quite a gentleman. You know, it's a shame. Uh, we pulled out all the stops this time. Uh, we, had a, we had a qualifying engine from TNL, qualified 14th, and then I went ahead and leased the engine. Bobby Labonte's team, they qualified an outside pole. We were ready to have a good finish today. It just seems like uh, the odds are against us right now, but I can assure you, our team will not stop trying. I mean, it's a great team that we have here. Derek can do the job. We just need to have that chance to prove that we can do it. Listening on the radio, can you assess the damage at all? I know the team is back in the garage here looking at the car, but from what you've heard, how bad is it? Well, I, I, it's going to put us really out of a competition situation, but I think the team is so good that they'll get Derek back on track today, and we'll get some laps in. It's just that they're not going to be the fast laps that we were looking for. I believe good things do happen to good people. And eventually, you're going to get your chance. Thank you so much, Doc. I Ch appreciate it. Chuck Ryder, another disappointing day here in Winston Cup Racing. Now, they're pushing uh, Derek's car all the way around the racetrack. They're in turn four, as we see from the Pennzoil copter cam. The car's in line behind the pace car down the back stretch. Well, coming up after our coverage of this race at 3.30 Eastern Time, it's the FedEx Championship Series at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, Road America, the Texaco Hamilton 200. Michael Andretti will start from the pole position. That's at 3.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. Back to Michigan in a moment. This is no ordinary leather jacket. Because when you put it on, you're not just saying you're a NASCAR fan. You're saying you care about kids. Buy the XI NASCAR Select Battery in 1998 and get the special 50th anniversary NASCAR jacket for just $150. And on behalf of NASCAR fans everywhere, XI will donate all profits to Give Kids the World Foundation. The special edition 50th anniversary NASCAR jacket. Look for details wherever XI NASCAR Select is sold. Nice jacket. Wrangler jeans are the perfect jeans to wear when you're going out for a little seafood with your best buddy. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Wrangler jeans. Perfect when you're training your dog. Or when your dog is training you. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. If you had $40,000, would you pay off your bills? make home improvements, or keep some for emergencies. Well, at First Plus, you can get up to $40,000 or more with no equity required. And you can get pre-qualified right now. Here's how. Do you own your home? Do you have good credit? Do you want to pay off your bills and lower your monthly payments? If you said yes to all four questions, call First Plus now. Tell them you're pre-qualified to apply for the money you need. Call First Plus at 888-550-MORE. Man, this gray hair makes me look old. And do what I did. Get rid of it. You were gray. I never knew that. 
No one can tell you use the remarkable hair coloring called Just for Men. Simply shampoo in, then rinse. In only five minutes, this unique Just for Men formula blends away the gray, actually matches your gray to your real color. Even I can't tell why it used to be gray. Thanks. Just for Men looks so natural, even friends can't tell. We remain under caution here at Michigan Speedway due to a two-car accident involving Derek Cope and Morgan Shepard. Beginning of 1998, NASCAR changed the engine compression on their cars down to 12 to 1. What is engine compression and how do you measure it? Well, Dr. Jerry Punch has the explanation in this track fact. And track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? Throughout the year, you hear us referring to 14 to 1 or 12 to 1, the old versus the new Winston Cup compression ratios, or even 9.5 to 1 for the Craftsman Truck Series or Bush Grand National. Well, what is compression ratio, and how do you measure it? Well, who better to ask than legendary engine builder Spinny Clendenin, who's in charge of all those programs here at Richard Childress Racing. Spinny, how do you measure compression ratio? Doc, it's simple. We take our sweat volume of our piston, which is actually the travel of the piston in the cylinder block, add it to our combustion chamber volume, then divide it by our combustion chamber volume. That's how we come up with the 12 to 1 or last year's 14 to 1. That may seem simple to you, but let me see if I understand it. I mean, us medical doctors have to keep things simple. Now, you're talking about sweat volume. That's from where the piston starts inside the engine block to where it finishes. That's the sweat volume of the piston. Exactly. You add that to the combustion chamber on the bottom of the head here, then you divide by the volume of this combustion chamber, and that gives you compression. Yes. So if you're going to lower from 14 to 1 to 12 to 1, as we did in 1998, you simply enlarge the denominator you're dividing by, which means enlarging this combustion chamber. Exactly. Okay, now, devil's advocate, what happens after 500 miles or 500 laps when you get carbon built up here in the combustion chamber? Doesn't that lower the volume, which means it will raise the compression? That's happened at least once last year during post-race inspection. Absolutely, and it's our responsibility to make sure we have a safety factor built into our engines. So you can't even start the race at 12 to 1. You've got to start less. True. As the cars come down, and they're not going green flag racing this time, the safety car stays on the racetrack as Johnny Benson leaves. And, Ned, it seemed like they went to 12 to 1 this year, but it didn't seem to slow the cars down at all. Uh, then many of the engine builders tell me that they're back to the horse. They lost some horsepower, of course, when they would, would uh, lessen the compression, but uh, they say they're back to that now horsepower, which results in speeds comparable, maybe even increase some. We'll be going green next time around. Meanwhile, John is with Morgan Shepard. Morgan's been checked out in the infield care center. He's all right, but Morgan, you had to be the most surprised person out there on the racetrack when you got hit from the side. I was, John, and obviously we're very disappointed because we were just victim of circumstances, and here's Joe Falk, uh, had a great race car, no sponsor, you know, desperate need of a sponsor, need a good run today. And uh, Doug and these guys just really prepared a good race car. And be taken out like this this early, uh, it's very disappointing. Somebody sent us a sponsor out there. We need some help. <laughs> Morgan Shepard disappointed, looking for a sponsor. But the good news is he's all right. As the graphic indicated, he has not had good luck here at Michigan. He finished 43rd in the race that was held here in June. And last year in this race, he finished in 40th position. Looks like Benson's still having problems. Yeah, they still got the hood up on, on his uh, Cheerios forward. Hey, hey, guess what? I knew we had an onboard camera on Rudy Bickle's car, and there it is. Right on the roof, the Thorn Apple Valley Premium Meats onboard camera. See all that crazy riding on his car? I told you last week what yep. he said, didn't it? Yeah, something about grilling, right? Go yeah. grill crazy. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Or we could uh, have a, a Big Mac, whatever. Big Mac, rings and arms. Uh, Joe Green is Kenny Irwin. He's carrying a Circuit City onboard camera. He has all those cars up there to pass. Green, 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 green. And once again, Labonte did not get a very good start. And as a matter of fact, pulled down. So Jeff Gordon would not run in the back of it. He did. I don't know what, what's happening on his restarts. But that Pontiac is not uh, taking off like he needs for it to. So he's fast after he gets it up. Off the road. He is now a lap down. Bernie Irvin's Pontiac doing fine, though, on the restarts and elsewhere. Jerry, what's the deal with Bobby on the restarts? 
checked with Jimmy Maycar in their pits. He said they, they don't think there's a problem with the car. However, I think what may be a problem, now he's getting wound up and comes back with a vengeance on the inside of the 24 car. The gear may be the gear they're running to get gas mileage. It takes a while to get going, but when it does, you see what Jeff Gordon just saw, they go right back by. Well, Bobby does move the Pontiac back into second position. Gordon now third, following behind Jeff Wally on the back, Joe Nemechek, Ken Schrader. And Jeremy Mayfield. And Ward Burton running in tenth place. Ward Burton, by the way, is carrying uh, the logo of the Detroit Red Wings on his car today, hoping to get some local talent support. You see Mark Martin closes in on Jeff Gordon. Gordon's car might be off just a tick here early on. Let's check out some of the Tabasco hot zone telemetry on Mark Mark's car. He's going through this corner. The slowest speed I've seen is 162 miles per hour. Ooh, right out against that wall. Now we accelerate down the back stretch. In line. 192, 193 miles per hour. But that's not the fastest part of the racetrack. Normally going into turn one is the fastest part of the racetrack. They say if he does uh, go a little bit faster as it goes into turn one. Just up ahead of Mark is Jeff Gordon. He's reported to be a little bit tight. Oh, look at this conglomerate of cars here. Sterling Marlin and Rich Bickle and John Andretti trying to come through the middle. Well, that's a recipe for a wreck. Well, he's got down the double file. That's 14. On back, Sterling Marlin is running in all these cars battling on back for these positions is Bill Elliott. Well, as they move through the corners there, how easy it is to run three and four wide on this very wide racetrack. Here they are three deep, maybe four deep, as Elliott and Jeff Burton come around. Burton already up to 16th position. He started 25th. We thought that he'd move towards the front. Sure enough, he's not letting us down on our prediction. bit loose that last time getting in the corner we saw Bill Elliott going to the corner right behind him and the back end a little bit loose condition. Napa Field Center showing you the manufacturer's battle. And there's the Ford leaderboard showing that Mark Martin is the best among the Ford contingent and here comes Martin now looking for third as he goes to the inside of Jeff Gordon and completes the pass. And we'll see Bobby Labonte has kind of caught Ernie Irvin. Sure has. We had a report that Jeff Gordon's car was a little bit tight right now through the corners, which will have a tendency to slow it down, especially coming off the corners. And that's where Mark Martin was able to make that pass. And again, the Tabasco telemetry will show us at the end of the back stretch. Well over 190 miles an hour, about a 191. You see Jeff Ford still losing a little bit. See, he loses a little bit. Now, last time by it, Bobby Labonte was right on the deck leg. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield. There comes Joe Neal and Rusty Wallace. That's eighth and ninth. to hold that car on the bottom of the racetrack and Bobby's coming off the corner he's right he has his foot laying right on the brake pedal and this gig we have is very sensitive so that's why we're showing him brakes on the corner coming off the corner even going in the corner Rusty celebrated his 42nd birthday here on Friday and crew chief Robin Pemberton was 42 yesterday here comes Terry Labonte and Ward Burton on the heels of Rusty Wallace on the to the outside, it looks like, but hasn't worked for him so far. 13th, he's now up to 11th and looking for Back up front, meanwhile, it's still a two-car battle for the lead. That's going to be too far Well, and Jeff Gordon isn't too far behind, is he? <laughs> because the guy that they're all concerned about in the garage here that just might have the best car here is Mark Martin, and we can see he's closed in He's right there. He's with him. And that time, 
the fastest lap around the racetrack. The Bob Lean Ford of Mark Martin. Ernie was second, and Dale Jarrett was third quick that lap. So going to be able to move by, or trying to get by Jeff Gordon. And that time, Bobby Labonte thought about taking a look on the inside of Ernie Irvin, did not get quite a, enough run to do that. Been a long time since Pontiac won at this racetrack. Rusty Wallace did at this race in 1989. See, Bill Jarrett has caught Jeff Gordon, and those guys are not letting these leaders get away. They're closing in. Jeff Gordon looks like he's going to fall back, but he looks like he's maintaining that difference. Weber. Yeah, Benny, Jeff continues to be a little tight on the racetrack, so he's battling that. But another thing is, just before this race wing green, Crucci Frey Abraham told his driver, we are not the fastest car today, so we need to be the smartest. So watch how their strategy plays out. John. Johnny Benson is back out on the track. He's a lap down. I talked to Steve Meal. He said what they did in that last pit stop where they were working very furiously as Mark Martin's making a charge toward the front said that they changed the number four spark plug, that it was not firing. That seems to have fixed their problem, but they're a lap down. Mark Martin has taken over second position from Bobby Labonte. And boy, there's a huge difference in the lines that Ernie Urban and Mark Martin are driving. Mark Martin likes for his car, that's Ernie Urban's radio. Mark Martin likes to run his car right down on the bottom of the racetrack. He won here in June, running that way. Looks like he's got that car set up the same way. And watch as he comes off that corner and gets that good run on Ernie. And Rusty Wallace also making a move on Joe Nemechek for the eighth position. Rusty's got it. But Nemechek <laughs> comes around and retakes it. And look at and a battle for the lead now. Mark Martin goes for it as Ernie Irvin. And he maintains it going clear. Martin got a run coming off turn two down on the inside of the race track. That's his side. Thing on turn four. Yep, the spotter told him he was coming. Clear beyond that six. And Ernie fights back on the outside with that momentum on top of the racetrack. You're able to keep that car. All clear. Freer. But Mark, you get to the one and two on the bottom of the racetrack. So I get side. Watch as he just drives down to that yellow line between one and two. But it takes away the line that he needs coming clear. off of the corner with the car up there, and he just can't get the run that he needs to be able to complete the car. Now, Jeff Gordon, while they're doing this, is closed back in on the back bumper of Bobby Labonte. Now, Bobby is taking a look on the outside of Mark Martin. Top five cars are running within a second of each other. Inside. Martin again tries to get the advantage on the inside. Bobby Labonte is going to slide down there behind Mark. Coming with him. Him. Get him a little bit of a toe. Yes, it will. That's the way the car here at Michigan Speedway. Still inside. Like All clear. Is, uh, it helps you on the straightaways here. And look at Jeff Gordon on the outside of Bobby Labonte. All clear. Trying to take over that third spot. And he will take on that spot as Dale Jarrett back in fifth. So it's Ernie Irvin. And Mark Martin now running second. Labonte moves high on the racetrack as he looks for third from Jeff Gordon, but not able to do so at this time. The top five cars are right together on the racetrack, completing lap number 29. They're within three quarters of a second of each other. There's the top 10. We'll be back with more in a moment. This could be you. Drive a Winston Cup car. Call for details. Race fans, collectibles of brick. A proud sponsor of Bethanis Racing and Wall is geared up for the 1998 NASCAR season in full stride. Celebrate 50 years of NASCAR at 770 Mantle Oaking Road and find the finest items available to date, including apparel, flags, stickers, die cast, and much more. We have a complete line of racing champions, Ravel and Action Die Cast, the most limited edition of collectibles of your favorite driver. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call now. Get ready for Alabama. August 27th at PNC Bank Art Center. Here comes Alabama. The music that legends are made of. Alabama in concert. 
together. August 27th at PNC Bank Art Center. Be there are angels. Tickets now and all ticket masters are charged by phone. Alabama from Budweiser. This bug's for you. All the time, how do you decide which anchors work together? And to be honest, it's an awkward process. Gio Larry, want to do the sports together? If yes, check this box. Charlie? Ultimately, you're looking for a good relationship. Um, if you're not doing anything later tonight, uh, would you want to do a show with me? Whoever said all's fair in love and war was probably a broadcaster. We'll be back with more Sports Center in just a moment. I don't even know who you are anymore. Presented by DeVilvis here at Michigan Speedway. However, give Mark Martin five bonus points. He did get credit for leading one lap. He's going to try to lead another one, Bob. He's got a run coming off of turn four. Let's see if he can get him back to the start Stay finish line. It. And Mark does lead him back to the start finish line, so he got, well, he don't get five more bonus points because he's already had those. Still inside, clear. And look at Jeff Gordon. Here he comes, that DuPont car. Fix that 24 car. He's going to be pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But but you know the car was tight in the beginning, and, and as they run on and the tires gets hotter, the track gets a little bit slicker. Sometimes that works to your advantage. Clear. Mark had a run. He decided to back off. See, you just can't drive in the corner back alongside inside. someone. You can come off the corner, no problem. You can accelerate off the corner, but it's so difficult to go in the corner side by side because you need to go in the corner and lean Help against that cushion behind. of air. Still inside. If there's a car there, the air is not there to lean on. You see Mark will back off each time going in that corner. Clear. And not take any chances. As Bobby Labonte now passed Jim West, Dale Jerick has passed uh, oh, clear. Jeff Gordon on the outside. Take over the third Wait spot. after it. on the outside. He's going way high again. See if he can get by Martin. Martin's up, jumped down to the inside. That's where his car works the best because he couldn't get the run on Ernie that time. And Jarrett couldn't get the run on Martin. You see another car coming in the picture back there is Jeremy Mayfield. He is gaining on this front group. But here's the big group of cars. Ninth on back, led by Ken Schrader. Ward Burton is right there also, and Joe Nemechek. And Jeff Burton has passed all these cars and has broken three of them, and Burton is now in eighth spot. Burton is about a little over seven seconds behind the leaders. We'll sort of monitor that to see if he's able to gain one, and I suspect that he will be able to. Ready are running side by side. Steve Park is back there, and so is Sterling Marlin. Jeremy Mayfield in sixth position there. You can see he's 2.93 seconds behind, and he's got a long way to go. He was working with Wally Dallenbach a uh, while ago, but those two cars have now separated themselves from each other. Dallenbach's car just is not quite right. He's not able to keep up with Jeremy Mayfield right now. About a second and a half to Jeremy. While he began his season in the Budweiser car here at Michigan. Here's our net field summary showing you the points positions, which will continue to change all day as the positions change on the racetrack. Jimmy Spencer is not in this race, therefore will fall drastically already lost four positions. Burton, see, started in 25th, and is working with the 8th 
position in 36 laps. I'm going to say that a moment ago. He was 7.17 seconds behind them. This last lap, he was 7.32 seconds behind the leader, Ernie Irvin. We'll check the speeds at the line and see how he's doing compared with everyone else so far. Ernie Irvin, the fastest that lap. Oh, make that burden. Good call. Very quick with Dale Jarrett. The two car was running up there at about 10th, 11th a while ago. He's now back to 17th. Jerry, what's wrong? Well, Bobby qualified 11th and got, actually got all the way up to 8th position for about a half a lap, and then suddenly the car began to go away. The car has gotten looser and looser and looser, and he's lost uh, those 8 or 9 spots here in the last 6 laps, now back in 17th position. They desperately need this first pit stop coming around lap 50 to 51 to make an adjustment on the car. Just completed the 39th lap, so those pit stops will be coming up in about 10, 12 more laps. Rusty Wallace is a four-time winner here at Michigan Speedway, but look at his performance in the last four races at this track. His best was a 13th a year ago in this race. Wow. Up front. Still a good battle between Mark Martin and Ernie Irvin. Martin has gotten credit for leading two laps, but Ernie has led all the rest. That means that he has led 38. 40 are in the books. Oh, he about missed that corner. About to get in that gray stuff. Well, notice maybe that's, maybe that's yeah, he, maybe he's that's been running up there a lot. That's the one that he likes. He's right on the edge, though. All right, here's the top 10 now, and 40 laps out of 200 have been completed at the Pepsi 400. We'll be back in just a moment to Michigan Speedway. Alfred, come here. Run across the street. Check out what's going on over a few times. Becky, run over the pizza hut. Check on Alfred. Cece. Lou, Victor. Check on Alfred, Becky, Lou. No, you're Lou. Anybody with a yellow shirt. If you want the most exciting, most outrageous, most mouth-watering pizzas there are, you got to go to Pizza Hut. The best pizzas under one roof. They're not coming back. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat-fused. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. drunk the art of tennis as played by the masters tennis on ESPN ESPN Sunday Night Football. Full season coverage begins September 6. We welcome you back to our Speed World coverage here at Michigan Speedway of the Pepsi 400 at 5.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific. Tune in to ESPN for the Mercedes Super 9 Great American Insurance Championship. You'll see the final match between Pete Sampras and Patrick Rafter. Today at 5.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. Here in the Pepsi 400, Ernie Irvin continues to lead Mark Martin by just a few car lengths. And the 99 car of Jeff Burton is on the move. He's closed Looking in to inside. almost six seconds now of the leader. And he's picked up uh, 
about a second and a third in the last five or six laps Jeff Burton has. They were seen catching Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah, Mayfield had gotten up within about two and a half seconds of the leaders, but he's now back over four seconds behind them. Here's Jeremy, who recorded his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory earlier this year at Pocono. And Ned, when, when Jeff Burton goes by and shows Jeremy Mayfield that high line, the slow fall run fast. I, I think you're right, Jim. Burton is using that high line like Ernie Irvin is. And uh, he's been picking up two to three tenths of a second to lap. Let me see, Jeff, look how consistent. Look at that. Four laps in a row at exactly the same speed for Jeff Burton. That's exactly what the crew chief wants to see is consistency of the same thing lap after lap after lap. And look like how much higher Burton is running, but look what a run it gets him coming off of those turns. In. It looked like he has 100 more horsepower going down that straightaway, but he doesn't. But that's the way that he comes off the corner. The car is freed up running up there in that second group. Or the high group, not necessarily the second group. He's not, in this corner, he's running a little bit lower than he is on the uh, turns one and two. as if he will pass him. And Mayfield's not going to bat him either. I think he wants to do exactly what Danny was saying. He wants to say, hey, where is he running so good at on this racetrack? Exactly. See him move up behind Burton? Mm -hmm. He saw him run him down. He said, well, look, we've got the same car. How's he doing that? He's going to check that groove out. And I, I think the 12 car will probably run faster up there. Park. There you see the points in the rookie battle. Remember, they take the top 15 finishes. Actually, he has now moved into the top 10 as he passes uh, Ken Schrader. So put Park in 10th position. The top 15 finishes count toward your rookie of the year status, so don't count Steve out of the rookie chase. Here's where Weber's war comes in. First of the routine pit stop, and this is early. You needed to get to lap 50, but remember, Ward Weber is one of those guys that ran out of gas at the Brickyard. They made a chassis adjustment. They're going to give him four brand new sticker tires, put in the fuel, 49 laps on the board. They're having trouble with the left front. Now they've got it on, tighten the lug nuts. And Ward Weber is Pontiac in the first of the big guys on pit road. The racetrack still a good battle as Mark runs that low line and Ernie up top and they're side by side through the corners, but Ernie is able to get a better run off the corner now. Mark has a good run. Still inside. He's going into the corner, but he has to back off. Clear. His car is a little bit loose going into the corner, Bob. I think if he ever back got inside. by Ernie Urban, they might be able to drive away Clear from him. There the he got that run. Whoa, the car slides <laughs> way up the racetrack. Wow. The on lap 55. on lap 55, we heard him say. That's pretty good fuel mileage. It's 110 miles. Sticks that Pontiac right up on the back bumper. I don't hey, lead again. <laughs> I like that being in front, Mark. He's a good friend. And while they did that battling, Dale Jarrett pulled up right on the back bumper to see Mark Mark go down in the corner. Touch that brake. Now, Ernie's going to try the bottom of the racetrack. Ernie, you're not going to like it down there. I'm telling you, <laughs> get back to the top. You're not going to. Oh, Garrett. there you go. Bill Garrett coming into the pits says uh, Kyle Petty and Jared Maydu are already in the pits. Here comes Jarrett down pit road. We go down to Bill Weber. And there's no need to document Dale Jarrett's woes at the Brickyard 400, the last fuel mileage endeavor we were in. So Dale Jarrett makes it past lap 50, 51 on the board. He brings his car to pit road. He has told his crew everything's perfect. He did complain earlier in the race about a mushy brake pedal. That shouldn't be a factor here at Michigan. Very quick on the right side. They do make a wedge adjustment on the left rear. Now the left side tires going on. This one of the best pit crews in the business. They clean off the grill. The tires are down. And Dale Jarrett heads back out on the speedway. Wow. In less than 17 seconds. 16-7. Well, I tell you what, those other guys on pit road got to step it up. Bobby Hamilton is in at the top of your screen. There he is, the crew to the right, John Turner. 
Hamilton's crew already have the tires on the right side. They'll swing around, come up, come on to the left side. No chassis adjustments. You think they might have made an air pressure adjustment. The left side will be going on as now more cars start heading down pit road, including Bill Elliott, Kenny Irwin Jr. The work is finished on Bobby Hamilton. He heads back out onto the racetrack. Rusty Wallace coming into the pits. Ted Musgrave. There's Nick Trickle. Rick Mass goes out. Here comes Rusty Wallace in. He'll Jeff be Jeff Gordon right behind Bill Elliott. Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton coming into the pits. These are all scheduled pit stops. And these three laps completed. We're on lap 54 as the crew now goes to the left side of the Miller Lite machine. The Lakey Chassis Jeff in the rear of Rusty's car. Oh, is he really done with that left rear? Jeff Gordon, rather, as the Rainbow Warriors get him in and out quickly. So we'll see where Gordon comes out on the racetrack and stacks up against Jerry with that 16 left. Here comes Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin down pit road. One pound down on the left. What do you think about your track bar? Would that be good enough? Jerry Punch. Hey. 36 car and 6 car coming down pit road. Ernie Irwin had been too tight. They're going to change air pressure to try to free it up. He was tight coming off the corner. Mark Martin had a problem of being too loose. Now the Skittles crew going to work. Changing right side tires. Ryan Beverton will make an air pressure adjustment to help Ernie coming off the corner. That's why Ernie couldn't get down, but he's a 6 car coming off. He had a push. Left side tires going on a 36 car. As now, the car number 6 heads down pit road. Ernie leaves. On Mark Martin to make an entry down pit road. They plan on putting a half a round of wedge in the valve and port for Mark Martin. Mark was okay when he was behind the 36 car, but to try the passing, the car would get looser and looser, and he had to actually pull away before the car would become neutral again. Now the valve and port comes to a halt, and right in front of him, right by the crew, comes Bobby Labonte in the Interstate Battery Pontiac. Now Labonte, they will make an air pressure adjustment, and we're talking about a truck car chain to try to loosen his car up. His car, like Ernie Irvin, was tight coming off the corner. Left side tires on the Valvoline Ford. Mark Martin is down the way. He zips by the Interstate Battery Street. Well, they complete their work, and he follows Martin down pit road. Well, Dale Jarrett's going to be way out in front of them when they get their speed up, as we see Mike Skinner in the pits in the Lowe's Chevrolet. Joni Machek also on pit row. The crew completing the work on that car. Here comes Steve Park as Bill Weber will call his stop. He has told his crew he has run out of gas. 55 laps on the board. Now he comes down pit row. Let's see if the car's running. It is not. The car is silent, so they will try and refire it. He may have shut it off to save what little fuel he had left in order to get it restarted. They made a chassis adjustment. They got the right side tires going on. Now we'll come around to the left side. Steve Park has only raced at this track once before. That was in the first race here last year. He won it. Now they're waiting on the left rear tire, waiting to drop it. The car is still not fired, waiting on fuel now. He tries once, briefly fires, and shuts off. Now still trying to get it refired. He's pushing the car forward down the road. Now it catches and stalls again. The park finally gets it lit. Wow, that was Yes, it really was, Bill. That cost a lot of seconds. He had moved up so well on the racetrack. But now that is really going to cost him track position. He had gained so many on the racetrack under speed, but the pit stop went wrong, and now he has lost more than he gained. The leader of the race shown is Chad Little. He has now led the last two laps, not among those who have made a pit stop in the last few laps. Back in a moment. Real thing. Come on. And they're off. 
Jumping out front is Sam with his project on Irish Castle. Coming up fast is Marley with hers on Iguanas. But from the outside, it's Eduardo with a multimedia Mayan mathematics report. Now more kids can go to the head of the class. Because now Radio Shack has the new compact creative learning series with software and internet enhancements specifically for learning. Only at Radio Shack. Compact home computers that can help kids do better in school so they'll do better in life. Hey, science. Ever wonder what a hard-working engine goes through? Yes. It gets the high revving I drove over the mountain because it was their crap kicked out of it. With abuse like that, you don't want to take chances. This is Quaker State 4x4, a synthetic blend for hard-working engines made by guys with more college degrees than they've had dates. It's been tested for pure maximum protection. There's nothing better. I wouldn't lie to you. They're not paying me enough. Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? Yeah, I'll be back on Tuesday. The number's on the fridge. I color-coded all your meals so you won't be confused. The blue one is a beef dish. B is for beef. The pink one's a pork dish. P is for pork. You get the idea. The green one is for vegetables. It should be violet for vegetables. But I thought you might see violet by seeing purple and interpret pork, which would defeat the whole purpose of convenient color-coding altogether. Four minutes on high. Stir halfway. Bye, guys. So what do you guys want for dinner? Blue or pink? Did somebody say McDonald's? I hope Mom color-coded breakfast, too. For the first time since the June race in 1995, Dale Earnhardt is leading here at Michigan Speedway. He, however, was among those who made pit stops during our early caution. However, he is just about to come in. He's coming off the pit, on the pit road right now, Bob, off turn four. John Kearney is there waiting for him. And Dale Earnhardt getting set to pull into his pit. Crew will go across the wall. I think it's only going to be a two-tire change. Plus, they're going to make a wedge adjustment in the right rear. They held up two fingers before going over the wall, as if to say, yes, it's only going to be two tires. We also saw some others. They're having a little bit of a problem on that right rear, but finally, he was down in the way after they got it full of gas. I actually, I should say they got the tires changed, but they were having a little problem getting it full of gas. So, Earnhardt is back out on there. So, Darrell Waltrip now is the leader of the race. He also pitted early, as did... Brett Bodine, who is running in second spot right now. There's your leader. Coming off the turn four. A lot of cars coming along there. Brett Bodine is a couple of seconds behind him. Now, Dale Wyatt is passing Brett Bodine for second place right now as they come to the line. One pound out of the right front. Battle rages on between Mark Martin and Ernie Irvin. Yeah. 36 car of Ernie Irvin and the 6 of Mark Martin came back out on the track. Right together. Now, when all the pit stops cycle through and uh, Daryl comes in for a stop, Dale Jarrett is going to have the lead. But Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin are catching him at a pretty good clip. Depends on when Daryl comes in. I think he's coming in right now. Yep. So DJ will probably leave this lap coming up. But Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin have been catching Jared at the rate of about two tenths of a second to lap since their pit stop. You see Kevin LePage go down a lap in the Prime Star car. There's DW, John Kernan. And Daryl's in a Pontiac this week. It looks like it's going to be right side tires only as they wait to get the last go, 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 ounce go, go, of fuel go, go. in there. Tell him to go, 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 go. So we're seeing 42, some 4200 for his 55 mile an hour speed down the pit road. But there's another one of these teams up here on my end of pit road that are trying that right side two tire change only. the lead now over Ernie Urban and Mark Martin. The interval is less than a second. Back to Ernie. Ernie was about two seconds behind when they came out of the pits. Jarrett's leading his 15th event of 1998. He last led at the Brickyard. About to go a lap down, DJ, in 32nd position. So there are 32 cars on the lead lap, or there were. Bickle goes a lap down, now 31. And the next one that will go a lap down is Pickle, driving again the 23 car for Jimmy Spencer. There is Ernie Irvin, who led 48 laps, 46 laps earlier. And in fact, he has led more laps today than in the first 20 races of this year. Coming into this event, he had led 41, combining Bristol and the Brickyard. His 
led 46 today. Heavy traffic here. And again, we'll remind you that Kevin LePage is driving the 16 car this week. Close traffic down there. Look at Ernie go to the outside. The Stay with it. Ernie makes it three deep going down into turn one. Clear one, one outside. Or if they get out into double pile as opposed to three. Clear high. Sticking the nose of his interstate battery Pontiac back in fourth spot. Jeff Gordon has turned it under in fifth. And Ernie Irvin's taking a look on the inside. Look how his line has changed since he changed tires. Trying to run the bottom of the racetrack. And maybe he's just trying to pass down there. All kinds of point position changes back of the top ten as Irvin has gained four point positions right now. Lord Burton up three. Ernie down on the inside, looking for the lead. Still outside, clear. And he's clear, and he can come back up and use all the racetrack. That'll help a little bit. So on the 68th lap of the 200 lap, Ernie Irvin reassumed the command of the race. Now Jarrett's going to move back down there a little bit. He's been running that high line since he made his pit stop. He was running before he made his pit stop. So he said, hey, maybe uh, Ernie's got something down there running a little bit more. With the pressure tires, normally you can run a little bit lower line on the racetrack. And then as they wear and get warmer and warmer, start losing their adhesion, you move to the top of the racetrack. Ernie Irvin has just put a lap on Bobby Hamilton, the driver in 27th position. 26 cars remain on the lead lap as the Pennzoil copter cam shows you Dale Jarrett also to the inside and lapping Bobby Hamilton. We're 68 laps in and Ernie Irvin leads Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Burton at the Pepsi 400. Just stay still. Don't move. Okay, now, does it hurt when I do this? Oh, okay. okay, possible torn meniscus. Is there any pain when I do this? Oh. Oh, all right. You've dislocated your patella. I'm going to have to set it. Hang on. Okay. You are an orthopedic surgeon. No, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Get down. My chair. Let's go. I'm not playing games. <laughs> okay, here we go again. Oh, dude. Just a bit outside. Hey, those dog obedience classes really paid off. Need a faster truck? Hey, this is yesterday's paper. Now you have a chance to win a real Rob Hornaday NASCAR racing truck, a one-year lease on a 99 Chevy pickup, or a tool set during Napa Auto Parts trucking and tools, sweepstakes, and sale. Come by today. Tomorrow's paper. Boss Super Spark Plugs, only 89 cents each. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by the Vilvas at Michigan Speedway is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. At Napa, we keep America running. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by Holiday Inn Express, who invites you to stay smart. 71 laps completed here at Michigan, and it's basically where it was before we had the series of pit stops. Ernie Irvin, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin running right up front. Down to Jerry Punch. Now, as prior to those pit stops, both Mark Martin and Ernie Irvin said the cars weren't exactly right. As you watch Mark now trying to make a move beneath the 88 car. Mark Martin said his car was loose. Ernie said he had a push coming off the corner. Both their crews made significant changes. Well, after the pit stop, Mark says his car is still loose, and Ernie says his car has still got a push. <laughs> 
things never change. Yep. You see right along with Mark Martin, the Valvoline on board camera. Check out the perimeter being the hot zone, Tabasco hot zone, 184, 187, 88, 190 miles per hour. 94. Wow. And the minimum RPM is down to about 7,100 RPM. this track is and maybe they could go through here flat out they can't though huh no they can't you can see they have to back off and even touch the brakes keep strong bomb race track see that's the mechanical advantage you're always searching for to be able to go around this racetrack flat out that's why they keep practicing and trying to find but you know there's just too much speed there's, there's some of that mathematics stuff that you and i don't understand that comes into play that's why they keep me yes <laughs> that's why they can't go through these corners in other words, 196 miles per hour, the car's just, the tires are too narrow for too much weight to be able to go through the corner wide open. And you try to turn, and, and that weight just shifts and, and uh, makes it difficult to turn. Mark Martin, he's still trying that, he's moved up just a little bit from what he was there a while ago, but uh, been trying that low groove. Meanwhile, back in the fifth position is Jeff Burton. There's Bobby Labonte running in fourth. And back here in fifth spot is Jeff Burton. And he passed Jeff Gordon and has put a little bit of distance on Jeff Gordon, as a matter of fact. But he's losing ground to the leaders. Jeff Burton is this time. He was five and a half seconds behind about five laps ago. Now he's 6.4 seconds behind. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon in sixth position is 9.2 seconds behind the leader. Back and check on Jeff, who's in a pretty good duel with Jeremy Mayfield. It's about as far as you said for the sixth spot, and obviously Jeff Gordon's car, they made that pit stop. It's not exactly to his liking. And Jeremy now, he found out he really likes that high line, then He's right up. He picked right up on it from Jeff Burton before they made their pit stop. It's been working well for him now. And Here comes Wally Dollenbach and John N. Freddy. The cars are running deep tonight. Frank Kipp, the car, he is a lap down. Back in John N. Freddy started this race in 15th position. He was up to 12th and has now come up to the 9th spot. Six races he has not only a top five but four top ten and has moved to 12th in the point standing certainly john and the richard petty team have come together and the richard petty team came together yesterday in nashville when jimmy hensley won the nascar traffic truck series race i think it's there they told me it was a terrific race that's good to see jimmy win he's been running that series uh, since it started basically and They've had some awfully good runs and has come close. As you see, Jeremy Mayfield has gotten around Jeff Gordon now. Mayfield is six, Gordon is seven. Now Jeff is back to ten and a half seconds behind the leader. And Bill has an update on Jeff Gordon. Well, Bob, he had reported to his crew the car was tied earlier in the race. So when he pitted, they made a chassis adjustment. He got four thicker tires, and they did play with the air pressure a little bit. Now his car is very loose, so that's his problem. And yesterday in happy hour, that was a problem for a lot of teams. But the track, they said, was very loose, and some teams weren't exactly sure if that was just the day or the way it was going to be today. As we get closer to the time when they ran happy hour yesterday, it appears the track is getting more and more loose. We saw Mark Martin there take second position from Dale Jarrett in turn number four. Not only that, but we've got quite a cloud cover that's moved over here. It was sunny when the race started, but now quite a bit of clouds over the speedway. That should help those cars that have loose conditions. Maybe hurt those that have the tight conditions. Morgan Shepard is back in the race. We also saw Jeff Green go back into competition a little bit earlier. But now he is again back off the racetrack. Jeff was involved in the first caution, and Morgan and Derek Cope were involved in caution number two. There you see 
Buddy Ernie Irvin has just put a lap on Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt running in 24th place. Right before he made his pit stop, Earnhardt led some laps. Jeff Gordon is losing time to the leader. He's 11 and a half seconds behind now. Yep. As we see, there are AutoZone on-track interval, and Jeff Gordon to Ernie Irvin has lost two seconds. And we see Irvin, look at all those times, 41 flat, four of the five laps, and Jeff Gordon consistently about a half second slower than that. Although Gordon did run one pretty good lap, that 41-3 down there. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that he has never won here at Michigan, he does have the best average finish of any active driver at this racetrack with the 5.2 average finish. He has led nine of the 11 races that he has competed in here at this facility. There's first on the left and right on the second on the right. That is Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin. They run first and second with Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Burton completing the top five. Then it's Mayfield, Gordon, Dallenbach, Andretti, and Terry Labonte. Cup car. Call for details. Race fans, collectibles of brick, a proud sponsor of Bethanis Racing and Wall, is geared up for the 1998 NASCAR season in full stride. Celebrate 50 years of NASCAR at 770 Mantle Oaking Road and find the finest items available to date, including apparel, flags, stickers, die cast, and much more. We have a complete line of racing champions, Ravel and Action Die Cast, the most limited edition of collectibles of your favorite driver. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call now. When you play in the water, you're part of our culture. If you need a stick, silent baggies, or any special beach gear, we've got you covered. We carry all of the Highline products from around the world. Everyone has their own style, and one of a kind means there's nothing else like Ron John. Ron John is for fun in the sun. Ron John has what you want. Ship Bottom Causeway, Palm Beach Island, New Jersey. Seems strange to most people, but I don't believe that breaking mirrors or spilling salt will bring me bad luck. But I do believe in superstition. I believe in never stepping on the foul line on the way to the mound, and keeping a hat dirty if it keeps a streak alive. I believe in lucky bats and rally caps. I believe in statistics, insight, analysis, and Peter Gammons' lucky ties. I believe in baseball. presented by DeVilvis here at Michigan Speedway. We're 84 laps into this 200-lap race. And Ernie Irvin continues to set the pace by about a quarter of a second over Mark Martin. And then Dale Jarrett is also right there behind him. They have put Steve Park a lap down. Steve in 23rd position, so 22 cars remain on the lead lap, and the 22nd car is Dick Trick. And he just went a lap down to the leader, so you see right between Ernie Irvin and... Mark Martin, so Trickle, who is running 22nd, is now lap down. And in 21st spot is Michael Walter. Boy, that uh, bad pit stop killed Steve Park, didn't it? He's running well on the track. He is running well on the race track. Right? Run out of fuel and having to restart the car. After 10 seconds, and wouldn't he love to have those 10 seconds right now? He could last another 100 miles before he got to worry about going lap down. Big deal, Jarrett. Try to drive down, take Mark Martin's line away. Well, Mark was trying to get by Trickle coming off the of turn two and lost his momentum, and Jarrett had good momentum, so he was able to drive down the inside, but think he can make the pass as it comes to the start finish line. And they continue to run wheel to wheel all through the tri oval here. Now Mark maintains that second spot. Bill Weber has more on Steve Park. Right now he's getting a lesson from two of the best. And even Steve Park is disappointed about running out of fuel. His crew is crushed. In fact, I talked to crew chief Felipe Lopez. He just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders and said, and we thought we were being conservative. Remember at the beginning we talked about fuel mileage. You had to have a very good handle on how far you could go. Obviously, they went a little bit too far. John Kernan. Jeff Burton's continuing to mow down the time between he and the fourth place runner, Bobby Labonte. He's picking up about a tenth of a second a lap. And the problem, though, that Jeff has, he wants to pit as soon as he gets to within his fuel window at the very first lap, because this set of tires just 
He, the set does not feel right to him. The car's just a little bit tight in the middle of the corner, but he has a weird feeling, as he says, about the, this set of tires. Dr. Punt. And one of the reasons he's closing on Bobby Labonte's Interstate Batteries Pontiac, that car in the middle right there, is that Bobby continues to have a problem with the car being very, very tight. The car is tight coming off the corner. They've had an adjustment during the pit stop. And of course, we've now gotten quite overcast here and it's cooled off. And that has made the car even tighter. He can't get the turn and he's losing ground. That car number 99 in fifth spot. He's five seconds behind the leader. Bobby Labonte, five seconds behind. His onboard camera, we look back. That's Mike Skinner down there, number 31. He's a lap down in 24th position. And Mark Martin just now got by Dick Strickland. Dale Jarrett goes with him. And Mark lost the second to Ernie Irvin, these two laps that he's been trying his best to get around. Dick Strickland watched the two different lines around the racetrack. Looks like DJ. So I thought he was headed right for it. <laughs> Here's an interesting situation. Ted Musgrave up on top of the 15 is battling with the car that he used to drive. That's the battle for where, Ned? 26 and 27. They both the lap down. And again, the 15, the 16 car is being driven by Kevin LePage. Uh, Jeremy Mayfield going by those cars. He's our sixth place runner. He's about 13 seconds behind the leaders now. Uh, Jeff Gordon is about... 14 seconds behind. You can see Ernie Irvin gets by. Kenny Irwin puts him a lap down. We had a little uh, get-together last week. We this time, Ernie just drives right on by. Because I'm sure there was no thought of any uh, of last weekend when, when they got came close together here today. Ernie has such a great car. He just drove right on around. Put a lap on him, so now 18 cars are on the lead lap, and an 18th position is a car just ahead of Ernie, driven by Peter Sack. Down wow. two. Well, that car is working. Right. Ernie is doing a great job of driving. Car is picking his way to sport two. Driver here, basically wherever he wants to. When he comes around, he will lead his 47th lap. Dale Jarrett has led 29, Martin 9, Earnhardt 3, Chad Little 2, and Daryl Waltrip led one lap earlier. I think Darryl, Dale Jarrett's been able to get by Mark Martin. He's moved into that second spot. It's like Mark, it seems as Mark is really having struggle to pass the car. His car works well on the bottom of the racetrack, and most of these guys are running. He would think if he could pass high, looks like he'd be better off, but he's really struggling to get by. Yeah, he is, and I think when he's up the side of the car now, he comes by that time, no problem getting by the 28 because he cleared it before he started off of that corner. But when he comes off the turn side by side with the car, the front end pushes up on him, and uh, he just has to back off of it a little bit, and it really costs him time. We're approaching the halfway mark of this race, 92 laps completed. They're on lap number 93 as Ernie Irvin has the lead over Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin. Those three running pretty close together on the racetrack. Then back in fourth spot, more than five and a quarter seconds back, is Bobby Labonte, followed by Jeff Burton. Those are the top five. We'll be back in just a minute to Michigan. got together to create programs to improve skills and safety, to educate, to promote teamwork and build better quality cars and trucks. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. How come the leading oil filter material 
dust, less dirt than Mobile One filter material. That's how come the Mobile One oil filter. Nothing stops dirt better. Available at AutoZone or call for the retailer nearest you. NFL tonight on ESPN2, Tuesday through Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Now, guys will have something to talk about. At Michigan, Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin grow side by side down through the trioval for the lead. Ernie Still inside. got the high line, Clear. able to maintain the lead. He had the, the right approach him to the turn. He did it a couple of times. Pit stops already happening here for the second time as Ward Burton goes out of the pits. He was the first to make a pit stop earlier when they made the green flag pit stop. So Ward uh, in here now on lap 95. Now they have 96. Yeah, Ward's got a problem because uh, if that keeps up, he's going to have to make an extra stop. Yep. Once again, Jared has a pretty good run down through the trioval, but staying behind Ernie right now as we see the action from the Pennzoil copter cam. That is, of course, the number 10 car of Ricky Rudd right ahead of Ernie. Ricky is 15th, so he is about to go a lap down. 14 cars on the lead lap. Joe Nemechek will make a pit stop. Jerry Punch is right there. Well, front row Joe not having the day he would like to have here at Michigan after a pretty good qualifying effort now being shown a lap down. They put right side tires on it, trying to get it completely full of fuel. And that's the big factor getting it full of fuel. You hear him say, go, 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 go. Pretty good pit stop, but only two right side tires. And we saw the leaders change four tires last time. What do you think, man? Well, some of these guys with Jeff Gordon change two because he's losing ground. Will he try to make up some of that ground with change, by changing two tires? He might do it because that could probably gain him five or six seconds. But I would understand he has a five-second lead on Jeff Burton, who is in fourth place. I suspect we'll see them take four tires. Gordon has dropped all the way back to the ninth. The car on the move once again is Jeff Burton, who has come up to fourth. And here is Jarrett once again. This is lap number 99 complete, so next time around will be the halfway point. Now, Buckshot is going to be the score on this. That's Buckshot there in the double Don't zero. Decide. Whoa! The... Depends on where the Buckshot is. Clear, the all clear. Good idea. Yep. Good, good, smart move by Buckshot there. Two guys made a good move there. Buckshot made a good move, and Dale Jarrett made a good move in not forcing the issue. As we see Kenny Irwin sit in the pit, changing right sides. Sterling Marlin is on pit road, so is Bobby Hamilton. Okay, I'm sure that Todd Parrott's telling Jarrett, okay, it's $10,000 at the yeah, line. You're sure you get here first. He's working on him. 28's going to get a penalty for entering pit road too fast. Way. Here is the halfway mark. Let's see who gets the $10,000 for leading this lap. Who is it going to be? I think maybe Jeff. We're going to have by about a fender. It was real close. Ernie said we got halfway. I don't know. <laughs> it was close. It was very close. Too close to call. And 88 got it officially. Turn two. Now he does move over to let the leaders go by. I believe you led that lap. Well, you tell me that ahead of time, I've got $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Four, working on fuel mileage here. Sorry. <laughs> the leader at halfway, by the way, is seven of the 20 races so far this year. Scoring has it as the 88 car leading at halfway. And again, they were Still just inside. about the same coming around for that lap. That was about the same margin that DJ won his first race, passing uh -oh. Davey Allison. Here's Bill Elliott in the pit. Buckshot Jones also in. So is Dennis Setzer, Jerry Punch. You can see Bill stop. Bill Elliott, the winning is active driver here at Michigan Speedway with seven victories. Gets a routine pit stop from Mike Beam and company. 
They will make a slight air pressure adjustment. Right side tires already going on to McDonald's Ford. The 94 car, we are being told, was clocked too fast coming down pit road. The official will stand in front of that car and hold him 15 seconds. Now he's looking at his left side watch. He is trying to hold Bell, but Bell speeds by him, and I guarantee you they will black flag him and bring him back in. Oh, man, that is going to be very costly. The challenge itself is very costly. Rich Rickles in the pits. Kyle Petty in the pits. Ted Musgrave coming into the pits. Jeff Burton looks like maybe speaking of pit stop. Here is Ted Musgrave in Bud Moore's car. Leo Garrett about to come into the pits. Coming into pit road, Bill Weber, he's headed for you. And they had talked about the tire pressure adjustment and the track bar adjustment. They decided they will make an air pressure adjustment on the quality care for Garrett's car had been loose. It was getting better and better, perhaps helped by the cloud cover, maybe not. Go around to the right side. It should be a four-tire stop for most of these leaders. Jeff Fortin is expected to hit the stall momentarily. They're having a long stop on the right front tire. Now they come around to the left side. Cool going in. Right behind him, Fortin just pulled into his stall. Waiting on the left front. On the 88, and tighten that. Now Gordon is in his pit stall. He will get a wedge adjustment. Also, tire pressure. Now the two goes back to the track. Gordon has told Ray Abraham the car was just too loose to pass, so they decided to pit early. They've got the tires on. He's away. He's very much. Ernie Irvin heads toward me. By the way, Rusty Wallace has made a two-tire change. Seven, Only two rights five, on the car number two. Three. Uh, and they signal Ernie to get on the brakes and stop hard in the Skittles Pontiac. Right side tires. Remember, Ernie still complaining of the car having a push being too tight. They make a track bar adjustment. They're going to show you Burton as well in the pit. Left side now there on that car. Back to Ernie. Left side tires going on. Ryan Pemberton through. Tommy is on the deck. Burton is away. You hear the screeching tires for Ernie Irvin. He's down and away. And Mark Martin heads down pit road at 55 miles an hour. 4,000 RPM in second gear. The crew reminding him, don't make a mistake. Here in the pit. Here he comes in. And they have the stop sign out. Jimmy Finney says no changes, no air pressure changes, and apparently no wedge or track bar adjustment, although Marcus said the car had been a little bit loose, but was getting better. Now left side, going on the car number six. 21 car, the Citco car in for Michael Walton, getting service from Lynn and Eddie Wood and the Wood Brothers. He is away. Likewise, the car number six is now away for Mark Park. Boy, Mark That's on that left front. Maybe they got him okay. Ricky Rudd also goes back into competition. So once again, we have seen the second scheduled series of pit stops at Michigan Speedway. We'll be back in just a moment with more of the Pepsi 400. and a sway bar. Rick, it's all there. That's good, because when things get rough out there, suspension is everything. Other manufacturers use a straight axle that bounces over obstacles, losing traction. Our independent rear suspension hugs the terrain for better traction and a smoother ride. The Sportsman 500 and the Sportsman 335 with shaft drive. You gotta ride it, believe it. Buy a new Polaris ATV now and get a Remington rifle or shotgun. See your Polaris dealer for details. What can service merchandise do to enhance your McDonald's Happy Meal Race Car Collection? Turbocharge it. Race into service merchandise for our exclusive limited edition Bill Elliott Racing Team set. Get your Ronald McDonald Gold Edition car, transporter, and display stand. A must for racing fans of all ages. Just $14.94. Or bring the $3 coupon on special McDonald's bags and get the set for just $11.94. Only at service merchandise. Bye-bye. Get the service merchandise soon. Because this offer is going fast. Hey guys, who's turning 50? Well, it's 50. 
Hey, I just turned 40. Not me. He's the older one. Older but faster. Yeah, right. Well, who is turning 50? NASCAR is. And Exide NASCAR Select is celebrating with a big 50 celebration. Win NASCAR race tickets or the grand prize. An NBA mascot worth $50,000. Thanks. I'll be right back. Hey, hey they work. The big 50 celebration. Enter wherever Exide NASCAR Select is sold. Oh, well. Michigan Speedway in a pit stop sequence. Mike Smith, the right rear tire changer on the 21 car, wore the crew cam for us as Michael Waltrip was in and out very, very quickly. Terry Labonte is in, John. And it's a four tire change as the crew completes the work. They made a track bar adjustment on Terry Labonte's car. The debut at the very top of the screen, leaving the pits in the Tabasco car. And that completes the cycle. And on the racetrack, the 36 car of Ernie Irvin is leading. And just like before pit stops, Mark Martin is right on his heel. I think Mark was in front of Ernie, and I think Ernie just passed him. He did. In fact, the last time around, uh, Mark was in front of Ernie, but he got by. Barry had about a six-second longer pit stop this time than he had on that first pit stop and it really cost him. Right now, Dale Jarrett is seven seconds behind Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin. This is the battle for first and second. It seems to be something if Ernie Irvin won the race and Mark finished second, he said, I finally beat Jeff Gordon and guess what? Yeah, there's another, again. there's another guy out there that could be. Well, Ernie Irvin's best finish in 1998 was sixth. He's done that at Daytona, Talladega, and the Brickyard. As a matter of fact, he has not had a top five since Talladega in October of last year. In the 99 car, Jeff Burton just passed Dale Jarrett and sure. took over the third spot. He sure did. He, uh, Jarrett had passed him about six or seven laps ago, and now Burton has come back up and passed him back. Bob Devani is in fifth. Jeff Ford has worked his way up to sixth place. Clear. That was a wreck just looking for a place to happen. I thought it was going to happen in turn two. Dennis sets the 13th car was in the middle of the racetrack, and cars were passing on the outside. And here come Ernie and Mark on the inside, making him on two, three abreast. It was scary, scary. Moment. <laughs> Seventeen, make that 16 cars now on the lead lap. Joe Nemechek is a lap down. And we'll check with Pete here. Herman at a 75.6. And the fastest back to Bobby Labonte so far. And Jeff Burton is the fastest time. He held Jarrett was third, so our, of course our front runner's got... Our front runners got killed making that pass the wrong turn, too. So it's really not fair to compare their speeds now. What BP was talking about. This is what took our breath away a lap or so ago over in turn two. Never seen the leader, and never seen the 13. <laughs> Look at that. Woo. Thank you, breath away. Especially riding in those cars. Red Boat I in front of the leaders. The paychecks. Taurus, the last car on the lead lap. He's running in 16th place. Grant's about due for a pit stop. car didn't have a particularly good pit stop. Bobby Labonte back in fifth spot. Jerry, what happened? Bobby heard Ned mention that uh, Dale Jarrett had a six second longer pit stop than last time. A similar situation here in the 18th pit. They came in to change all four tires and they had two lug nuts pop off the left rear tire which cost them an extra three and a half to four seconds. They had to reach down manually, find the lug nuts and put them on. So four more seconds in the pit than ordinarily they would have wanted. Let's go to John Turner. Terry Labonte, who just made a pit stop a few laps ago, comes back on pit road. He radioed in, told his crew that he thought he had a flat right rear tire. They took the right rear off. It didn't look like it was down too, too much, but they're going to change all four tires and send Terry back out to the racetrack. Bill Weber? Dale Jarrett's crew had an excellent stop when they stopped the first time in this race, but on their most recent pit stop, they did have some problems. A lug nut fell off the right front wheel. They had to tighten that, put that on manually, then tighten it. They came around to the left front, and the exact same thing happened. So two lug nuts fell off. They had to be reapplied by hand and tightened with the gun. That's 
Remember, they lost their time on pit road. We noticed Dale Earnhardt also just made a pit stop. He's back in competition, as is Brett Bodine. We're watching the battle for fourth spot, Jared and Bobby Levine. And behind them in sixth and seventh, Jeff Gordon and Jeremy Mayfield. Now they're about seven seconds behind the battle of four. Jeff Gordon has not led a lap so far. Terry Labonte was the most recent to get credit for leading a lap during pit stops. More than eight leaders in this race. Well, we had Brent Bodine in the lead lap there a moment ago, and I said it was about six a pit stop. He has made a pit stop now, so he's brought Jeff uh, Brett down. In the back. Here's Mark making a move on Ernie at the end of the back stretch, and can't do it. He just can't drop All clear. Just can't drive that car inside on, on the inside of someone and not have that back that inside wall of air to lean against and Mark understands that. Now on the last lap, he might do something. Still there. Clear low, all clear. The manufacturer's battle and the clear, all clear. Board on our field hardy field summary. Ford's doing very well. And there's the Chevy leaderboard. The Pontiac leaderboard is doing best because look at that. They're leading with Ernie Urban, Bob the Bonnies and Fifth, and Burton and Andretti ninth and tenth. So four cars in the top ten. See, Pontiac has led 93 laps today, mainly because of Ernie Urban. Yep, he's led 89 of them. Once again, Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett are side by side down in front of the main grandstand here, which is race fans today and Labonte has it. Meanwhile, this is once again seven seconds behind the wheel. Over. 
Now he goes on the he goes on the outside of Mass on the inside of Darrell Waltrip, and meanwhile there's Schrader. He's just trying to figure out what to do with Schrader right now. <laughs> on the lead lap as Ernie Urban a lap down. Urban in the lead over Mark Martin here in Michigan. We'll be right back. The powdered sugar on this donut puts a semi-protective barrier between your fingerprint and your nutrition. But even if some grease does get on that donut, <laughs> that's just flavor to a high life man. If you had $40,000, would you pay off your bills, make home improvements, or keep some for emergencies? Well, at First Plus, you can get up to $40,000 or more with no equity required. And you can get pre-qualified right now. Here's how. Do you own your home? Do you have good credit? Do you want to pay off your bills and lower your monthly payments? If you said yes to all four questions, call First Plus now. Tell them you're pre-qualified to apply for the money you need. Call First Plus at 888-550-MORE. NASCAR team owner Ernie Irvin trusts his vehicles to a team of professionals. You get the same professional service from the team at the Federated Car Care Centers. We're professionally trained by Federated to keep your car in top condition. Federated Car Care professionals install top quality name brand parts you can count on. Professional technicians and top quality parts. We're your team. The Federated Car Care team. Look for the Federated Car Care Center near you. Some things are obvious from the start. Like, things turn out better when you work together. That's why the UAW International Union and General Motors Corporation got together to create programs to improve skills and safety, to educate, to promote teamwork and build better quality cars and trucks. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. The High Life Man knows that if the Pharaohs had duct tape, the Sphinx would still have a nose. We salute you, duct tape. You help a man get to Miller time. Welcome back to a Sunday afternoon of auto racing here on ESPN. After our coverage of this race here in Michigan, FedEx Championship Series will race at the beautiful Road America and Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Michael Andretti will lead them to the pole as the Texaco Haviland 200 will get the green shortly after 3.30 Eastern time after our coverage of this Michigan 400, which is being led by Ernie Urban. Our Pennzoil copter cam shows you that Ernie has just a couple of car lengths advantage on Mark Martin. And you can again see that high line that Ernie is driving and the low one that Mark is in. Ernie keep working for each. Yep, that's correct. Depends on how they'd like to drive and how their car is set up. Right now, Jeff Burton may be, in fact, the fastest car on the racetrack. He's closed in to less than five seconds behind the leader, Ernie Irvin. There was Mark once again. There's Terry Labonte that uh, had that unscheduled stop a moment ago. He just moves over, let the leaders go by. Then where was going on with uh, Jeff Gordon? Well, Benny, for the last couple of laps, he's been the fastest uh, car on the racetrack. Or if not the fastest, certainly one of them. They did make a wedge adjustment on his last pit stop, and they also made a small tire pressure adjustment, and he has really improved the handling and in addition to the speed of that race car. Now, remember, remember last week at Watkins Glen, he was way back and he was charging through and late in the race. Now, as for his teammate Wally Dallenbach in the 50 car, returning to that ride after Ricky Craven resigned this week, Dallenbach is having a fabulous run here today, and his crew is supporting him on pit road. Their last stop was just a tick under 17 and a half seconds. So a good day all around for Wally Dallenbach and that Budweiser crew. He is currently running in eighth position. You see, Jeff Gordon, folks, a fact on Jeff Gordon, the last time that Jeff Gordon didn't lead a lap, in April this year. In 
Black, coming into today's race, he had three consecutive wins, seven consecutive top threes, 13 consecutive races led, and three consecutive most laps led. But he hasn't led so far today, and Ernie, by the way, has wrapped up the five extra bonus points for leading the most laps. But he and Mark Martin continue to fight it out. Mark might have led that lap. Doesn't matter, but he's already got five bonus points, and Ernie's got the most. Down to Jerry Punch. Ordinarily, Mark Martin is very reserved and very focused in the race car. And I guess he's having a pretty good time today because just a moment ago, he cued the microphone to Jimmy Finning and said, Jimmy, hey, I won't get mad if you talk to me. Talk to me, man. Tell me something. It's lonely out here. <laughs> Tell him, Mark, you're doing good. Just keep it up. We hope we've got to make one more pit stop. We'll try to cut off a good one. We'll try to beat those guys. I'm trying to tell you something like that. Keep it positive. 69 laps to go in the race. That's a third place guard, Jeff Burton. He's now four and a half seconds behind the leader. Behind him is Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. He's about 5.6 seconds behind. He's back a fifth place car, a little over six and a half seconds behind. There's Robert 20-28, two laps down. And here we go, Ernie on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get by Kevin LePay. And just Ernie, does Mark have the preferred line? It could be. This could be a pass to the lead. Still outside. Mark gets behind the wrong car at the wrong time. Get inside. Ooh, oh, wow. Wide. Mm. Oh, it's Mark got him. I tell you what, the fans will be a little upset about that deal there. Not clear. In the Hardy's Field Summary, the manufacturer's battle as of now. Now Ernie's down on the bottom. All clear. What I meant by that, the fans will be a little upset with Kevin Page. in the lead lap. I understand what he was trying to do. He's not going to get a lap out of here. He's already a lap down. Yeah. He's trying to save another lap. Yeah, he's in 25th place. But while they're racing up there, Jeff Burton just continues to... And Bobby Labonte is gaining on Jeff Burton. And Bill Elliott has a problem. Drops down to the apron of the racetrack on the back stretch. Where was he running? And 15... Yep. We don't hear any engine sounds from the onboard camera. I don't think he would be out of gas. Well, that's not a good sign. I would guess when he gets to pit road, he'll make that hard left and just go to the garage area. He stopped on lap 100, and we're on lap 134 now, 135. So he should be good Let's go to the pit for Jerry Clark. He can tell us. Mike Beam, not a good sign. The car slowed and we don't hear the motor running. Yeah, he came down the front stretch. He said he blew up. I don't know whether it dropped the valve or what, but, you know, we, uh, we just had a tough year. You know, it just it seems like nothing's going right for us right now, but, you know, next week's another week, you know, we'll see what we can do. All right, you can hear Mike Beam searching for something to say. What can you say when you've had the kind of disappointing year that Awesome Bill has had? But he has been good on this racetrack down through the years. Seven victories, once four in a row here, two in 85, and both races in 86. Mark Martin now beginning to widen his lead on Ernie Irvin. It's up to above a half second. Burton third, then Labonte, Jared Gordon, Mayfield, Dallenbach, Ward Burton, and John Andretti. Winston Cup car. Call for details. Race fans, collectibles of brick, a proud sponsor of Bethanis Racing and Wall is geared up for the 1998 NASCAR season in full stride. Celebrate 50 years of NASCAR at 770 Mantle Oaking Road and find the finest items available to date, including apparel, flags, stickers, die cast, and much more. We have a complete line of racing champions, Ravel and Action Die Cast, the most limited edition of collectibles of your favorite driver. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call now. 
This month on Adelphia Home Theater, it's four spies versus one small boy, Home Alone 3. Britain's hottest gals play it up in Spice World. He can't escape the soul of a killer in Fallen. Hoffman and De Niro do some spinning in Wag the Dog. Matt Damon learns a lesson in Goodwill Hunting. And Kevin Costner delivers the goods in The Postman. Order these hits from the comfort of your own home. Check your local listings for movies and start times. Adelphia Home Theater, your link to great movies. Just when Cart was ready to crown Zanardi King, Greg Moore stole all his glory. Now, with revenge in mind, Zanardi looks to reclaim the throne. Texaco, Havlin 200, today at 3.30 on ESPN. A magazine's success starts with the writers. What's on Junior's mind? Ask him about anything but home runs. And what's in the college football preview? Who will be this year's top performers? And I want the scoop on the Longhorns' Ricky Williams. Print it, baby! It's good to know that in an era of superstars, big corporate sponsorships, and network TV deals, there's an organization that also cares about fairness and sportsmanship that realizes its fans are the sole reason for its success and knows it should never go so fast that it can't slow down if there's a good enough reason. This is NASCAR, and this is the way we've done things for 50 years. Michigan Speedway, where the Pepsi 400 continues to be led by Mark Martin with Ernie Urban in hot pursuit. The shots courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Covering the activity for us from above Michigan Speedway. Mark was able to get around and put about a half second between himself and Ernie, but that's where it is stalled out. Meanwhile, Ted Musgrave drives the 15 car of Bud Moore back into the garage area. Mm. Tough break. Let's check the Bud race recap. The leader right now is Mark Martin, as he has led 18 of 139 laps. 21 lead changes, two caution periods. They both came early. Holding 11 laps and the average speed nearing 153. Here are the drivers who have led at least one lap. Ernie will get the double bonus points for leading the most laps. Ted Musgrave is being shown off the race track. He just went off. And we have three cars that are out of the race. Elliott, Shepard, and Cope. Well, NASCAR has checked the videotape, and they have now determined that, indeed, Ernie Irvin was leading at the 100-lap mark at halfway, and so he will get the 10 grand. Glad to see that Ryan, Ryan Pemberton, the crew chief for Ernie Irvin, did not, uh, not criticize too badly for not paying attention to the halfway lap, and telling Ernie about it so he could hold off Dale Jarrett. He held him off anyway. Yep. Two laps down. 
Ricky Rudd, only one down in 14 spots. And then comes Rich Bickle. He is two laps down in 29th position. the first plus financial car 26 johnny benson and jeremy these cars in the big group jeremy mayfield the lead lap is running in seventh position then setcher was four laps down he's in 36th position he's risen in the third and two laps down and steve park despite the fact that he ran out of fuel is in 15th position just one lap down Jeff Bodine, he's, run, he's racing with Steve Park for a position. He's running 16th a lap down the Phillips car. And there we see the Bud Mobile. And he is in eighth place to lead lap. And Buckshot Jones, the real three camouflage car, double zero. 31st, he's a couple of laps down. Punch, who has a report on the 15 car, which seems to be having a few problems. Jerry? Well, Bob, Ted Musgrave has taken the rescue forward back to the garage area. The Bud Moore car entering its first race for 1998. He said on the radio, apparently the oil cooler quit working and the oil temperature was pegged. So they went ahead and decided to park it or at least take it back to the garage area. See if they could possibly fix the car. The 15 currently in the garage being worked up. John Curtin, how about Terry Labonte's ride? Well, we documented to Terry earlier, he said when he thought he had a tire going down, the tires were up, he went back out, he thought he had a tire going down again, the car was just extremely loose, but that's not the extent of his problem, he's apparently dropped the cylinder, only running on seven cylinders, so he's kind of uh, having a really bad day at the end of the weather. 147 laps are complete, we're closing in on what could be the final round of green flag stops, Dale Jarrett wants that stop to come soon, because he has felt a vibration in this set of tires. His car was also tight. That seems to have improved a little bit, but he does have a little vibration in this set of tires. He can't wait to get those off. Kenny Irwin has made a pit stop, so we are beginning to see the uh, regularly scheduled stops, but there are two laps away from those drivers that are running up front. Jack Roush's driver, Mark Martin, is in the lead here in Michigan by one second over Ernie Irvin. Jeff Burton is third, followed by Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett. We'll be right back. No multi-million dollar contracts. No victory laps. Not even a winner's circle. But if you think these weekend warriors who run the SCORE Desert Championship Series take anything for granted, think again. Which is exactly why they run with a Duralast battery from AutoZone. A battery so tough, so dependable, we back it with a two-year free replacement guarantee. The next time you hit the road, don't settle for anything less. Mission Control, we have a problem. Even in today's high-tech engines, deposits can still diminish power. A dirty fuel system affecting performance. Enter Valvoline Synpower, a new line of high-performance additives and cleaners. A complete fuel system treatment formulated with component-targeting synthetic molecules that lock on and eliminate those power-robbing deposits. Fuel and air mixture, a go. So your engine runs cleaner and performs the way it should. We have it all. Valvoline Synpower, rocket science for the road. Can I help you? I'd just like to tell you that Steve in produce is a very helpful young man. I think he deserves a raise. Hmm. I always thought Steve was sort of a wise guy. Oh, no! He's a real gem! If you're gonna get a raise, hmm. get a raise. I had that kid all wrong. If you're gonna get breakfast, get breakfast. Hardy's Frisco Breakfast Sandwich on buttery grilled sourdough bread. If you're gonna go, go all out! Soft comfortable Wrangler jeans are perfect when your family's going out for dinner. And no matter how far out you go, Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Wrangler jeans, perfect when you're training your dog or 
when your dog is training you. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-257-0500. Pepsi 400, where Dale Jarrett has just made a pit stop. Rusty Wallace is currently on pit road. Rusty is down a lap. He relinquished 19 to come in for this pit stop, but he has completed it. This should be the final series of pit stops. Should be. We'll see others coming in here very shortly. Within the window of the fact that they can go the rest of the way on fuel. stay out there and hope for a caution. There is Mark Martin who continues to be the leader of the race. Coming up on Dale Earnhardt to put another lap on him. Earnhardt 17th. Well, Bill Weber, Jeff Gordon is headed for his pistol. But he may not be headed for history, Bob. Trying to win four straight races and tie the record, but currently not running in the top five. This will be his final stop. His car has been getting better and better. They will make a chassis adjustment. They peel off the plastic shield on the windshield, so he'll be able to see better. They come around to the left side, a four-tire stop, thicker tires, plenty of fuel to get to the finish. They clean the grill. Your fourth now continues in pursuit of history. Here's John Vernon. Your third place car, Jeff Gordon, just pulling into his pit stall. A four-tire change. He and Frankie Stoddard have decided they're going to a round and a half a wedge on the right rear. They're also adding a pound of air pressure in both right side tires. They've been saying, be smooth, be smooth. Jeff tried to puff him up by telling him, we know what we need right now so we can catch Mark Martin. Let's go to Jerry Hunt. Right side tires only for Urban. They took four. They switched it up. Get they after. made We're a right. call to go with right sides only. And one they round of the clear. As Mark Martin will come down pit road. They saw the tire changing done. Will they change two or four in the valve and Ford? Can they afford to change four tires? We'll see what call Jimmy Finning will make. Now the Valvoline crew for Jack Rouse. Scamper over the wall. The man who has won the last two consecutive races at Michigan Raceway last year. And this year in the spring, Mark Martin trying to be able to get four tires here on the race car. Left side tires going on. They pull off the windshield. He is now and away. Good pit stop for Mark. 17.1 seconds. The 18 car of Bobby Labonte is headed down pit road. Back down to Jerry Punch. Final pit stop of the day for Bobby Labonte. Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Pontiac has not won at this race track since 1989. And the one car of Steve Park pulls out. Labonte takes a hard left. They work up down pit road. They will peel off the windshield. They will make a chassis adjustment. Trying to tighten it up just slightly. Right side tires only. Now they will come to the left side. Remember, the 36 car only took two right side tires. They will get four. Just like Mark Martin did a moment ago. Bill Weber. Wally Dolan back on pit road for what he hopes is his final stop. They pull the plastic sheet off the windshield here. It is just... Go, 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 go. Into the finish. Dolan back handling in his seat in the Budweiser 7. Well, a bit of a surprise there that Ernie only took two tires, huh? Well, I mean, I don't know anything about the tire wear down this, but that's the only way he's going to win. Because Mark Martin... Was, had passed him. He looked to be a little faster than Ernie. That's the only way he could win. So, I, you know, I've got to applaud if the tire wear is anything to get to the end. I have to admire Ryan and Ernie for making that call. He is the leader of the race now by just a little more than four seconds over Mark Martin. Head stops have all been made. We'll be back with more in a moment. Pepsi presents a Jeff Gordon moment. One year ago, Darlington was a magical place for Jeff Gordon. With the Winston Million on the line, 
Jeff started seventh in the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Fighting his way to the front of the pack, Gordon took the lead for good on lap 296 and withstood a dramatic charge from Jeff Burton on the final lap to capture NASCAR's million-dollar bonus. Hey, you want to win some cool stuff? A Chevy Monte Carlo trip. A Pepsi racing jacket. It's the Pepsi Triple Challenge. For a chance to win, guess the driver who leads the most laps after all three races and the number of laps led. Let's review. Guess the driver who leads the most laps after all three races. The winner by mail, the internet, or the NCI toll-free number. Hey, Bob, can I win that Monte Carlo? Right, 24, man, like you need a ride. So, go for it, fans. This one's for us. Mission Control, we have a problem. Even in today's high-tech engines, deposits can still diminish power. A dirty fuel system affecting performance. Enter Valvoline Sin Power, a new line of high-performance additives and cleaners. A complete fuel system treatment, formulated with component-targeting synthetic molecules that lock on and eliminate those power-robbing deposits. Fuel and air mixture, a go. So your engine runs cleaner and performs the way it should. We have it all. Valvoline Sin Power, rocket science for the road. Before my 8 o'clock flight, maybe we can talk. Otherwise, what's over? Come on. Come on. Didn't get an AC Delco battery? They last up to 30% longer. Battery. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Hey, buddy. Who's daddy's widow man? You are, you are. Oh, that's so cute. He wants a French fry. No, no, no. No, no. These are daddy's fries. Mommy's making your food. Yes, she is. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Did somebody say McDonald's? Okay, take the whole box. Pepsi 400 here at Michigan Speedway, 161 laps old. Right after this race, we'll take you to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, where the Cart FedEx Championship Series will run the Texaco Haviland 200, and Michael Andretti will start from the pole position. Here in Michigan, the last time that a pole sitter won the race was Bobby Labonte in 1995. Right now, Ernie Irvin, who started from pole, has a 2.3 second lead over Mark Martin, but Mark has really closed in and shortened that interval considerably. It's not up here. Somebody help us. I mean, see, they're, they're, they're trying their best to get by Kenny Irvin, who is one lap down and three laps he's fought him. And he's just, it's, he can't get by him. And Mark Martin is just coming. That time he gained another four tenths of a second. And that was a spotter saying, I'm looking for the for the spotter for the 28 car. I can't find him. Somebody try to help us. So he's cut it. The lead to less than half of what it was when they came out of the pits. It was 4.15 seconds. Now it's just over two seconds. Now there's an on-track interval report. Last 157 through 161 will show you how Mark has closed in on Ernie. 10-4, we set up to him. See, he's got a good lap, pretty good lap right there. If he could run that 4090, he might have a chance, but is he, is he getting by? He's stay with it. No. Ah. No, still not able to get by. I, I expect the, the 28 car took on four tires when he stopped. Ernie's been faster all day long, but those two tires might be making a difference as he goes to the low side now tries to do it. Let's go to the piston, Jerry Punch. Well, one might ask, why would they put only two tires on the right side of the car number 36 of Skittles Pontiac? Well, behind me, I asked Ryan Pemberton. Ryan said, you know, Doc, we got a great race car. We've got to beat before this year with two tires stopped on the final stop. Hot we figured if we change two tires, we might force the six and the 18 also to change two tires. That didn't happen. They changed two only, and they are out there. Now, the 18 and the six car behind me, Jimmy May car, and Jimmy Finney decided to take on four tires because they needed the time to put the car full of fuel, given the number of laps they have left to run. And also, they said yesterday in the Bush race, the guy that changed two tires were jumped after 30 to 35 laps, meaning the 36 car may go away with 10 or 15 laps to go. Let's go to John Turner. 
Jeff Burton took on four tires. They're going to air pressure adjustment on the right side. And he was really concerned when he found out that Ernie Irvin had taken only right side tires. But his crew chief, Frankie Stoddard, calmed him down, telling him it's no problem. We've been catching him all day. We're going to catch him now. In fact, they just radioed Jeff and told him in the last five laps he's gained 1.6 seconds. Mark Martin going for the lead. Let's go to Bill Weber. And as they battled out on the racetrack, Dale Jarrett had a frightening moment on pit road in his last pit stop. The last lug nut on the left front tire came loose as he was about to leave. But quick hand by Robbie Hancock got a free credit. He hit it with the gun and they got away. A NASCAR inspector was all over it and made the correct call. Jarrett trying to get to the front. Jeff Gordon's car is getting better, but the question is, is he going to have enough time to try and rope in the leaders? As for Welling Dallenbach, a two-tire stop in fuel. Gucci, Tony Burr said the left side wear has been excellent. It is not a gamble. It's a piece of strategy that could help them grab a top five finish in the Right now, Wally Dallenbach is back in eighth position. Jeff Gordon is sixth. And Mark Martin has the lead over Ernie Irvin. With those four tires, Bob, he's going to be hard to catch there. Four, uh, he has pressure left side tires. Mark Martin is indeed the master here at Michigan with four wins and an average finish of six. He is going for his third consecutive victory here at Michigan Speedway, and he's pulled away to a half-second lead over Ernie Irvin on lap 167. Okay, my big debut. Here we go. Wise, wise, wise. Uh, okay, I'm ready when you are. Good. Why? Did he forget his line or what? Is this the regular one or is he the understudy? Is this... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hey, you gotta wait for me. Let... Hold it, hold it, not you. He goes, then I... Wait a second, not you. Hold it. Why? Why? I can't work in this environment. Cut! Cut! It starts here. It starts here. It also starts here and here. And it all starts right here at Walmart, home of the EverStart battery. All the coal cranking power your truck, car, boat, or more will ever need. Power you can count on when you need it most. And since it's at Walmart, you can also count on a good price. EverStart. The name says it all. Mission Control, we have a problem. Even in today's high-tech engines, deposits can still diminish power. Dirty fuel system affecting performance. Enter Valvoline Synpower, a new line of high-performance additives and cleaners. by complete fuel system treatment, formulated with component targeting synthetic molecules that lock on and eliminate those power-robbing deposits. Fuel and air mixture, a go. So your engine runs cleaner and performs the way it should. We have it all. Valvoline Synpower, rocket science for the road. and Speed World coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilvis here at Michigan Speedway being brought to you by Valvoline Sintower, a new line of premium additives and cleaners for your car. By Everstart Battery, all the cold cranking power your truck, car, boat, or more will ever need. Available at Walmart. And by ESPN Video, get your officially licensed NASCAR videos from ESPN Video. Later this week, we go back at it again in NASCAR Winston Cup coverage. Mud pole qualifying is at 6 o'clock. On the deuce from Bristol Motor Speedway, then the Food City 250 at 7.30, both of those on Friday. Then on Saturday, RPM tonight at 6.30, NASCAR today at 7, and the goodies headache powder 500 from the always exciting Bristol Motor Speedway at 7.30 next Saturday night. All right, here at Michigan, Mark Martin with a 1.3 second advantage over Ernie Irvin. But look who's coming. Jeff Burton and Dale Jarrett have run Ernie Irvin down. They've been gaining, Bob, at the rate of about three-tenths of a second to lap on Mark Martin. And Irvin lead, losing a little bit to Mark. He's now 1.7 seconds behind. And here goes Burton trying to take over second. He comes to the inside of Ernie, coming off of corner number two and down the back stretch. And Ernie fights back. John Curtis will watch the battle. Ernie's father, that they've asked him to tell Ernie, hey, you only took on right side tires, we took on four, we're faster than you, please give us a break, let us get around. And all 
also lap after lap just counting Jeff down to the finish coaching him along saying be smooth tire management be smooth tire management there's 28 laps to go you still have plenty of time to catch Mark Jeff Burton now in second position Jared in fourth right on the heels of Irvin and Bobby Labonte there we see him coming in the corner here's our fourth place car he's only four and a quarter seconds behind Mark Martin, the leader of the race. Jeff Gordon has dropped 19 seconds behind Mark Martin. The last driver to win four in a row, as Jeff Gordon is trying to do here today, was Mark Martin. Back in 1993. Here's our first plus financial field summary. We'll see Points positions have changed. Everything status quo right now in the top five. Are gaining a position over Terry Labonte. Labonte has eight laps down now in 30 seconds. Bobby. And Daryl Dale Jarrett on the inside of Ernie Irvin. That's for the third position. Couldn't quite make him wiggle a little bit in the middle of the corner. And they're again working with different lines. Here comes Dale Jarrett past Ernie Irvin. Moved Jarrett to third. Now Mark Martin is only 52 points behind Jeff Gordon. And Dale Jarrett is 208 points out of the lead. And this is clear evidence what new tires or four tires will do to the speed of one of these race cars. And just how critical the tires are to the speed on the getting around these racetracks. Ernie Irvin, the car in the back of the Skittles car, changed two tires. All these other cars changed four. And we see now Ernie is struggling, struggling to keep up. And these guys just passed him and going on with those two pressure tires. Yeah, they've gained about five seconds, over five seconds, and we think that pit stop. So you can see the difference in it. 175 laps completed, 25 to go. Jeff Gordon again has fallen well back. We're still looking for him as he comes out of corner number four. Here he is, and when he crosses the line, we'll get the report. It's 18.95 seconds behind Mark Martin. So as we pointed out earlier in the race, Michigan is the only track in which he has competed at least five times that he has not won. But those tracks that he has uh, not done not run five races, Phoenix, Texas, and Las Vegas, he has also not won. But he hasn't done all that bad here. In fact, you can count eight top fives and nine top tens and an average finish of fifth. That is best among the active drivers. Let's talk about Frank Kimmel just a little bit. He comes to his first NASCAR Winston Cup race as the points leader of the Archibondo Marmite Series. He's three laps down in 33rd position. Yeah, he's finding out just how difficult the racing with these guys in, in NASCAR Winston Cup can be because Frank Kimmel, just as I did in 1970, I found out just how good Winston Cup drivers are there, the best in the world. We talked to Jimmy Spencer yesterday during our happy hour, and he mentioned several times how much he hurts and he wasn't talking about how he hurts physically from that concussion he received at the Brickyard 400. He's talking about hurting down deep inside because he just cannot race here at Michigan. And of course, Mark Martin is also driving with a lot of emotion today, and I can only imagine what victory lane is going to be like if he can drive to victory here this afternoon. His father was killed a week ago yesterday. Here's Ward Burton blowing up in the park in his house. That happened down in one and two, and the caution flag is out. This could be a huge break. Right now, there's only 10 cars in the lead lap. Wow. This could change the whole complexion of the race. Ward Burton was running in seventh position when the trouble erupted on that in BNA Pontiac. We'll be back with more from Michigan in a moment. This could be you. Drive a 
Winston Cup car. Call for details. Race fan collectibles of brick, a proud sponsor of Bethanis Racing and Wall, is geared up for the 1998 NASCAR season in full stride. Celebrate 50 years of NASCAR at 770 Mantle Oaking Road and find the finest items available to date, including apparel, flags, stickers, die cast, and much more. We have a complete line of racing champions, Ravel and Action die cast, the most limited edition of collectibles of your favorite driver. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call now. For over 30 years, we've been smacking the lip and getting to. And we're jamming at Rod Shaw. We are the future of surfing and the place for all the extreme sports themes for your entire family. One of a kind means there's something custom for everyone on your team. For the hottest gear from around the globe, come visit the coolest surf shop on the planet. Ron John Surf Shop. Ship Bottom Causeway, Long Beach Island, New Jersey. Old school, like Earl the Pearl, shaking and baking. Mark Fidrace, Bobby Orr. Old school, Paul Bear Brand. Mini Escobedo. Black Pistol P. Illy Funkster Socks. Black Socks. Short Shorts. Definitely old school. Old school like me. Please, Urban. Dr. J. Running down in like the 70s with a big afro. Got it going on. I can play basketball with anybody. Now that's old school. While these two trucks appear to be exactly the same, there is, however, one measurable difference. The brand of brake pads. Performance friction carbon metallic. The power to stop the best. Ask for them at AutoZone. as you rejoin us pit road opens and it becomes very very busy as those running on the lead lap come in led by mark martin we go down to john kernan the 699 and 88 triple pit there'll be a track bar adjustment for jeff burton we're anticipating the right side only that's what he did the very but he ran he ran over the air hose on oh for bill weber two tires for jared on the right side he's on his way mark martin cuts off everybody off pit road Like they came in. See Ernie Irvin there changing four tires now. Here comes Jeff Gordon out, no doubt, with two tires. And Jeff's going to come out, I believe, in fourth. Jeremy Mayfield fifth, and Bobby Labonte. And we see the NASCAR official talking to Jeff. Burton, Bruce, Jeff Burton, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Bruce. have to come back because of running over the air hose. We don't know just yet. We'll see. Here's a replay of what happened when Jeff was pulling away. See, the right front tire changer never came back around the car. Now, no doubt when he comes back in, he will, he will change the left side tires, but you see, the right front tire changer never came back. Well, fortunately for him, there are only nine cars on the lead lap now, so it, it won't be as damaging as it could have been. However, those are nine good race cars. Yeah, let's look at that again. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. There we see, the, here's the right front tire changer. Now, he's supposed to come back around the car and bring this air hose we see with him. They let the, the lay that to Jack down, and Frankie, didn't he get a chance to come back around the car? I'd have got run over if he would have. Yeah. Let's well, see, so Frankie. Jack went down, well, he took off. That, that, that's his signal to go, and when the Jack went down, he left. Now, here comes all the cars down pit road all the cars that are lapped down and unfortunately jeff burton is in that group back down to john and the first thing frankie Stoddard's is going to have to do is tighten the lug nuts on the right front tire he left the jeff left in such a hurry they left the jack down so quick that he didn't have a chance to get the lug nuts tight now he's going to be very careful getting into his pitfall he comes in now that frankie will go around he will tighten the right front lug nut then they'll take the lug nuts off the left side now the jack man will come around, Frankie Starter wheels around, one pump on the jack, get him up, left side tire is going on now, they have to make an air pressure adjustment on those. Now, he stalled the car momentarily, but because we're under caution, it won't hurt him because he'll line up as the last car on the lead lap when he gets back out there on the racetrack. And that will be in ninth position. Mark Martin does have the lead, Dale Jarrett second, and Jeff Gordon, we believe, moves up to third. 
We'll be back with more in just a moment. You can keep your car looking clean, but you've got to keep your engine clean, too. Newly formulated Valvoline DuraBlend motor oil is a synthetic blend that suspends the dirt, unburned fuel, and water that cause harmful deposits and reduces oil burn-off. DuraBlend protects vital engine parts, so your engine runs cleaner and better longer. It outperforms all leading conventional motor oils because a car can look great. But it's what's inside that counts. Valvoline DuraBlend. While these two trucks appear to be exactly the same, there is, however, one measurable difference. The brand of Brake Pass. Performance friction, carbon metallic. The power to stop the best. Ask for them at AutoZone. Now that it's summer, we thought you'd like to know what all of your girlfriends are eating. Wendy's Fresh Stuffed Pitas. Hi. Hi. Full of the delicious things like fresh vegetables and chunks of chicken that you feel good about. May I take your order, please? I think I'll have a pita. Wendy's Fresh Stuffed Pitas. Feel good. It works for me. American League sluggers light it up on ESPN when Eric Davis and the O's soar into the Jake to take on the drive. Orioles Indians. Sunday Night Baseball, tonight at 8 on ESPN. All I care about is baseball. You might be what better than one of the veterans. And if you're better than one of the veterans, and, and that veteran has a bigger contract than the rookie, that veteran's going to go before that rookie. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. laps to go at the Michigan Speedway and the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilbus. Here are your top ten. Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Jeremy Mayfield, Bobby Labonte, then Irvin, Dallenbach, Andretti, Burton, and Marlin. And coming up next, after our coverage, the Technical Haviland 200 for the CART FedEx Championship Series from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We'll be right back. Come on, baby, come on, baby, let's see what you got. It's gonna be huge, this is gonna be huge. It's the bargain of the month from Coast to Coast, Service Star and True Value. This month, there's lots to cheer about with a quick set lock set, a true tone telephone, <laughs> or prep line deck wash. Go, go baby, baby, go baby, go baby. <laughs> I told you it was gonna be deck wash. You got the gift. Thank you. Go bargain of the month, it's a very, very big deal. Yes! Screaming, pointing, and praying are all acceptable ways for a NASCAR fan to show their support. Now, there's another. Drink accordingly. You depend on your car, so trust it to Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube makes it easy. Every 3,000 miles. 3,000 miles, you make a smile. America, Jiffy Lube. Drive in, drive out, drive on. We're about a half a lap of wedding going green. Let's listen to some second. radio chatter. The one green, be ready. It's a deal. I'm a lap in front of that son of a bitch. Talk to us. Well, we shouldn't have listened to some radio chatter. <laughs> Should we have? <laughs> well, shoot. Anyway, they're getting lined up for the restart. There are nine cars on the lead lap. And they're all up on the outside. Jerry Punch. Mark Martin has gotten very emotional in the race car. He wants this, this race in the worst way. We told you he's driving. He is hard out today. He knows his car is good on long runs. He also knows the 88 is going to be awfully stout on a short sprint to the flag, and he could end up fourth or fifth. But he wants it, and even Jack Roush tried to you calm ready? him down and said, stay focused. I know the emotions Great are playing flag. heavy, Great but do the best you can. 16 laps to go. And they're four, about four, 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 four
that have four green flux fresh powder, where Derek and Martin only have two. Mark Mark dives with a wow. ball on the rain Look at him, almost to the apron. Look at that thing take off off of that corner. Jeff Gordon in third spot with four, well, he only has right size, two tires. There's Jeremy Mayfield, a fourth place car. Here comes those cars that they're talking about with four fresh tires. Bobby Labonte, the 18. There he goes. And also Ernie Evans. Oh, and Labonte just drives up on the outside of Jeremy. Said, How about that? Excuse me. I don't think Jeremy knew that he was there for a moment. I think Ricky Rudd might have brushed the wall as he came up for If he didn't, he got off the close to it. One thing that Bobby Labonte and Jeremy Mayfield don't want to do is run side to side with him long because those leaders will get away from him. Now Bobby Labonte gets that position to go into the turn. Here comes Ernie up on the outside. He also has those four fresh tires. And Labonte picked up a Ooh. terrible push oh, off that corner. Did. He almost hit the wall. Bobby Labonte tried to go through the corner so hard he picked up the push and could not get turned. Almost ran the ball like this did. But he's got it going again now coming through turns three and four. He's gaining on the leaders coming off of that turn, Bobby Labonte is. There is the leader of the race, Mark Martin, the Domeline car, the 88, the Ford Quality Gear car, in second. And Jeff Gordon, right on his back bumper in third, and here comes the fourth place. Now, they were coming away from Jeff Gordon before this coffee came out, but here he is with an adjustment on that Chevrolet, and uh, now working on Dale Jarrett right on his back bumper, trying to get the back end of that Ford number 88 loose. And nobody's better at that than Jeff Gordon. They're doing some unbelievable racing in the back. But meanwhile, this is for the lead. And Jeff Gordon is the fastest, faster than Jared or Martin. And the fastest, however, was, again, Bobby Labonte. And Bobby Labonte is coming. There he is, just within car length of Jeff Gordon. I think Bobby Labonte has time to catch them. Those four tires and cars have been good all day long. And look at that. Look at it. Moose runs him wow. on the corner. Time winner here in Michigan, Bobby Labonte looking for win number three. Here comes Gordon down on the inside. He's got a run on Jarrett trying to take it second spot away. And he had nailed by about a half a car length at the line. They raced down into turn number one. Mark Martin continuing to lead. He'd like to see these two run side by side, or all three of them battle for position while he moves away. But Gordon now does have second spot. And I'm told they took the spring rubber out of the right rear on Jeff Gordon's car that last time, tightened it up just a little bit, and it looks like it's really working for him. Wouldn't that be something to come back and win this race as far behind as he was? Isn't that incredible? And of course, now, Eddie June here, he was far ahead, and the caution came out, and he lost the race. Now, the line was inside of Jared. The battle for third is in front of the tri-oval. Here is Bobby Labonte at the line. Again, about a half a car length ahead of Dale. Those guys are saying, oh, I wish I had those four tires. And Labonte completes the pass as Jared stays up there on that high line. Back behind there, Jared Mayfield just went around Ernie Irvin. We got it beside of him, which uh, Ernie has the four tires. I thought that he did when he was up there, too. But right now, racing with Mayfield, and Mayfield now drops back behind him going into turn four to so watch this battle left front. Is in turn four. We look back on second place Mark, uh, second place Jeff Gordon from Mark Martin's car. And when they get the line, there it is. Ten laps to go. 190 complete. And 192, 193 miles per hour. Down in turn one as he goes to the bottom. Gordon goes to the outside. He's up in the high line as they come off the second corner. Had a good run, but Mark closes up and oh, look how close they are back there. Oh, man. Wow, how is, he, how is it possible for that car to go back and forth that quickly? Mm. Now Gordon will head for the high side of the racetrack once again. But here comes Labonte on the bottom of the racetrack. What a tremendous race among these four drivers. And back there in fifth spot is Ernie Irvin. Mark Martin needs for Bobby Labonte to catch Jeff Gordon quick. And those 
two guys start racing, maybe that would help him. Here goes Gordon to the outside. Looks He's like got it this time. He's got a good run, but Mark will come off the corner and slide up ahead of Jeff once again. It's an unbelievable race. Look at this. Man, man. Bobby Lamont pushed up again coming off the turn two, and that cost him some track position. Here goes Gordon now on the inside. We'll see if Jeff has any more luck on the bottom side of the racetrack. Here he is in quarter number four, coming up and taking the lead. Jeff Gordon will lead lap 192. Eight to go. First bonus points off the day. So that graph that we ran that said Jeff Gordon, the last time he didn't lead a lap in Texas, forget that. Yep. Did I see backfire out of Gordon's car, uh, Mark's car that time? Well, other people are saying they saw it too. Could be. He might have broken an exhaust pipe. He lost speed down the straightaway there. Benny Bobby Labonte really ran up on Mark Martin. I believe that he has lost power. Bobby Labonte down low on, her, on Mark Martin as they work through the third and fourth corners. Jeff Gordon has the lead. Now seven laps to go. Here, trying to take a look on the outside. There again, he didn't have that wall of air to lean against him. Now, who's Jerry going to follow? Neither one of them. He's going to try to go by on the inside. Look at this. Three wide down the back stretch. Jared, Labonte, and Martin. And Jared is really loose, and we can see that he needed to go up to the racetrack, and here comes Labonte back on the inside. Meantime, that's what Mark Martin wanted for Bobby Labonte and Mark Martin to do, but... Now Jeff Gordon is glad to see it in his yeah. rear view mirror. Yeah, he just run away from them while they're racing back there. He's got a one and a half second advantage with less than six laps to go. That's, I mean, he, that's what that's what Mark Martin wanted to see with Jeff Gordon and Bobby Labonte racing like that a moment ago. Now Martin is back in third spot, and about to lose that to Jarrett. And Jarrett now completes the pass, put Dale in third, Mark Martin back to fourth, but Mark will take a look to the inside as they head down the trioval, and there are five left. Mark yep. Martin had an ignition problem this morning. They were concerned about an ignition problem in his car this morning, and uh, felt like they had it fixed. Irvin and Jeff Burton, I believe. Yeah, they're gaining on those, those guys as they race four positions back there. That's a battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh between Ernie, Jeff Burton, and Jeremy Mayfield. Good battle there. Meanwhile, Martin once again gets the... Oh, boy, what a slide job that was. Oh, he got the left side tires down on the apron, it looked like, and slid up right ahead of Jay, uh, Jared. And meanwhile, Jeff Burton just continues pull away while all this race goes on back there. Yep, once again, Jeff Gordon was back in sixth position, almost out of contention, and then we had the caution. He was able to make the adjustments, and he is in the lead. He was over a half a lap behind. That's Ernie passing the 99 car. But Ernie in fifth position. Jeff Gordon back in sixth. Seventh belongs to Jeremy Mayfield. Eighth is... Wally Dolan back, ninth, John Andretti. Those are the cars on the lead lap. Then you wonder if Mark Martin might have had another ignition problem and switched ignition because it seems like the wheel has picked back up again now. I think that that might be what happened, Ned, because that might have been what happened when I saw the backfire down in one or two. So he certainly is running better now than he did just a few laps ago. Two laps to go. Advantage is 2.09 seconds for Jeff Gordon. Here once again is Irvin Burton and Mayfield as they battle fifth, sixth, and seventh. And there you can see the interval that Jeff has over Bobby Labonte and Martin and Jarrett. 
This has been one of the better Michigan races that we've seen in a long time. This time around, Jeff Gordon will get the white flag. One lap to go. We we'll talk about the mechanical advantage, the springs and the shots and the shots and things that they search for all the time. Jeff Gordon today, his car was not competitive, so they made They couldn't afford to take that time to do it on the green flag pit stop. And they finally got a call from here at the end of the race so that they could make that adjustment. Gordon's mechanical problem that caused the caution. Boy, he has done it again, it apparently seems. And he moves into some great company. Jeff Gordon comes off of corner number four and looks at the checkered flag. He wins the Pepsi 400. Dale Earnhardt, Harry Gann, Bill Elliott, and Mark Martin, and now Jeff Gordon in 1998, four straight. We're doing makeovers. Interested? Come. Sit. Come on. <laughs> what do you think? If you're going to get a makeover, Come on. get a makeover. If you're going to get a burger, get a burger. The Monster Burger, only at Hardee's. Two large, juicy patties with the most bacon and cheese you can get. Ooh. If you're going to go, go all out. Frankie, baby, I got some great news. What is it, Louie? The middle frog. Mm -hmm. He's experiencing post-electroshock muscular irregularity. What? He's developed a nervous tick, Frank. He can't act anymore. Why, 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 why? It's horrible. Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, Budweiser wants me to replace him. Oh, they lost their mind? All my hard work has paid off. Your hard work? Yeah, well, the auditions, you know, the drama classes. Yeah, Louie, you hired a hitman. With my own money, I might add. This is no ordinary leather jacket. Because when you put it on, you're not just saying you're a NASCAR fan. You're saying you care about kids. Buy an EXI NASCAR Select battery in 1998 and get the special 50th anniversary NASCAR jacket for just $150. And on behalf of NASCAR fans everywhere, EXI will donate all profits to Give Kids the World Foundation. The special edition 50th anniversary NASCAR jacket. Look for details wherever EXI NASCAR Select is sold. Nice jacket. No multi-million dollar contracts, no victory laps, not even a winner's circle. But if you think these weekend warriors who run the SCORE Desert Championship Series take anything for granted, think again. Which is exactly why they run with a Duralast battery from AutoZone. A battery so tough, so dependable, we back it with a two-year free replacement guarantee. The next time you hit the road, don't settle for anything less. He has done it again. Jeff Gordon picks up his eighth win of 1998 and 37th career victory. Downtown McDonald's winner says the interview with Dr. Jerry Bunch. Jeffrey getting a big hug and a kiss from Brooke. Jeffrey, all I can say is absolutely awesome. With 20 to go, you're a half a lap behind, not even in the top five, and you win this thing. What happened? I have no idea. I, I, I'm in shock. I, I cannot believe this. Uh, you know, Mark Martin deserved this race more than anybody here this weekend, and, and uh, I, I really pretty much thought I was going to finish, you know, maybe in the top five and be happy with that, but... Uh, I guess this was for Pepsi. <laughs> I guess uh, my sponsor wanted me here in Victor Lane. Uh, this team did an unbelievable job. I mean, 
you know, when Ray called those two tires there at the end, I was shaking my head. I wasn't sure what I, because I couldn't drive the thing on four with four good tires, but uh, I didn't know what was going to do it too, but that was the magic, you know. The car just needed to be tightened up. Those other guys on two tires, uh, I was able to, to race with them. You know, had I raced for very long, I wouldn't have been able to do it, but uh, race, uh, Mark raced my tail off. And he, he is the man. I, I tell you what, our prayers are, are out to him, and I know how bad he wanted this, and I, I really thought he'd be standing here instead of me. But uh, I guess I got to thank DuPont Automotive Finishes and Pepsi and Quaker State and all the people on this Chevrolet. They did an awesome job with that team. A victory salute from the champion to Mark Martin, who gave it a gallant effort. Jeff Gordon wins at Michigan, and Bob, now there are only three tracks he has yet to win on. They are Phoenix, Texas, and Las Vegas. Coming into today, he had never won at Michigan Speedway, but he drives home to victory in the Pepsi 400. This is Pete. He recently got a letter offering him a new credit card with a $3,000 limit and an interest rate of 18%, which is odd because Pete is a dog. Now, why would anybody offer a credit card to a dog? Well, who else is going to sit still for 18% interest? There is a smarter way to borrow. Call Countrywide at 800-942-0421 and find out about a home equity line of credit. The interest rate is lower than most credit cards and may be tax deductible too. A Countrywide home equity line of credit lets you use the equity you've built up in your home to add a room, remodel your kitchen, or anything else. Now, Pete doesn't own his home, so he'll just have to stick with credit cards. If you've got equity in your home, don't carry a high balance on your credit cards. Call Countrywide at 800-942-0421. Countrywide. Easy. Really. What can service merchandise do to enhance your McDonald's Happy Meal Race Car Collection? Turbocharged. Race into service merchandise for our exclusive limited edition Bill Elliott Racing Team set. Get your Ronald McDonald Gold Edition car, transporter, and display stand. A must for racing fans of all ages. Just $14.94. Or bring the $3 coupon on special McDonald's bags and get the set for just $11.94. Only at service merchandise. Bye bye. Get the service merchandise soon. Because well, this offer's going fast. Mommy's making your food. Yes, she is. Yes. She... Oh, no. no. Oh, 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 Did somebody say McDonald's? Oh, God. Take the whole box. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Pepsi 400 presented by DeVilvis at Michigan Speedway being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Let's take a look at the final results. The yellow arrows indicate those who led a lap, and the double arrows go to Ernie Irvin, who led the most laps here. Chad you know, Little started in 40th place, finished in 10th. Good run for Chad Little. Sorry. You know, when we talked to Mark Martin after Jeff's win at Watkins Glen, he said, maybe Jeff is just supposed to win the rest of them. And by golly, he might. He just might. <laughs> Never see all 43 cars. Now let's take a look at the point standings. We had one change. Earnhardt moved up to eighth, and Terry Labonte slipped back to ninth position as a result of today's race here at Michigan. 97 now the advantage by Jeff Gordon. Let's finish the Mark Martin story, Bill Weber. Well, Mark Martin has come back to the garage. He did stop his car on pit road and congratulated Ray Everham on the win. A very classy move. Right now, Mark is in the front of this rig by himself with his wife, Arlene, composing himself. He has addressed the media briefly and is expected to return here. But he did manage to smile when he climbed from the car. Mark Martin disappointed about his finish, but did congratulate the winners here today. And we'll have Mark's thoughts on RPM tonight, later tonight on ESPN2, guys.
He finished in fourth position here this afternoon. Well, later this week on Friday night at 6 o'clock Eastern time here on the Deuce, it's Bud Pole qualifying as we go to Bristol and then the Food City 250 for the NASCAR Bush Series Grand National Division at 7.30 Friday here on ESPN. Over on the Deuce at 6.30 Saturday evening, RPM tonight, then NASCAR today at 7, and the Goodies Headache Powder 500 from the always fast and entertaining Bristol Motor Speedway, the High Bank Half Mile, is at 7.30 Saturday night. Coming up next, the CART FedEx Championship Series runs the Texaco Haviland 200 from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Michael Andretti will start on the pole for that race. Jeff Gordon has won his fourth consecutive race in 1998, besting everybody else here at Michigan Speedway this afternoon. Congratulations, to Jeff. We will see you on Friday as we move now to Bristol Motor Speedway. For John, Bill, Jerry, Ned, and Benny, I'm Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us here at Michigan. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.